Good evening. Welcome along to Friday's action here at the Modus Super Series. Three places left to be filled at finals night. Glenn Durant has joined me to guide you through the runners and riders tonight. But first of all, let's take a look at who got through from Group C this afternoon. Yeah, Glenn, just reflecting on the week for some of the players, Willem Mandigas may be disappointed at how he's performed. Yeah, I, I tried to champion as much as I could. I think his best days were 2019, and he freely admitted that he's not playing the dart he once was, but hopefully he takes the positives away from the week. Yeah, he bows out with fellow Dutchman Jeffrey Bekema. Uh, Tony Newell, interesting character, produced his best performance in 10 years, he said, using Mandiga's darts. And he's taken them home as well now, so I think uh, they've got the little agreement that when he's world champion, he gets 20%. Yeah, it was Mandiga's darts, Luke Getty's flights, Getty himself produced some decent stuff this week, didn't he? A tenacious character. I liked him. I like Luke Getty. Uh, I hope you see him again. I think he is someone who will take the positives from the week. Uh, Leonard Gates, though, did make it through. He went through the card today. Bingo, he shouted, just like Glenn Durham did last Saturday at the Christmas party, although no cheating from Leonard Gates. And certainly good from Alex Small as well, the winner of the group. They were the two we identified to go through the group and, you know, and form prevailed and uh, could be very dangerous could Alex Small tomorrow he's very powerful very direct and that's the kind of thing you need on a finals night final confirmation of that table then uh, Leonard Gates and Alex Small joining uh, Adam Warner who made it through from group A the ADC qualifier um, yeah as we mentioned Getty was really really tenacious and dogged in the last group not really reflective of what he did in the first three days Leonard Gates though he did have a bit of a gap to bridge, and he did it. It wasn't easy, uh, and he pulled out the five out of five today, and he was the class act. Uh, he just took a little bit of time to get warmed up, but I really liked his interview. He said he was on debut, he was learning as he went along, and uh, again, could be very dangerous Saturday night. Well, three is the number, three through, and three to go through from Group B, and it could be done after three matches this evening. Very rarely do we see a Group B table like this where it looks like almost a foregone conclusion. Yeah, it's, it's obviously new to me. I couldn't decide to choose out of Chris Lamman and Kai. I think Rob Collins, actually looking you know, or just reflecting a little bit, he was quite unlucky. He's not 100% in himself, and even again tonight, he's, uh, he's not feeling great. But the top three look like they're running away with it. Yeah, because of the way the fixtures have fallen as well, if the first three fixtures go the way of those top three players, then it means it will be settled uh, after three games tonight. So uh, maybe a few neutrals, Glenn, hoping for some reverse results of yesterday. And the commentator's been those neutrals as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, keep everyone entertained, no doubt, with uh, Matthew Edgar downstairs too. But, yeah, th three great players. What would be interesting if the d three do run away with it, what an exciting final we have on Saturday night. Absolutely. The first match will be Richard Veinstra against Kai Fan Lung. Uh, and Lung got no change at all out of Veinstra when they played yesterday. It was a 4-0 win, a very impressive 80 checkout to win the match as well. And it's kind of been the way of Richard this week, hasn't it? All or nothing. Feast or famine, I think we use the term uh, a few times. He's a class act. Um, it's his time. He's got Q School just around the corner. He really should have been playing PDC the past couple of years. I used the word underachieved on Monday. It's time for him to shine. Yeah, Lung is going to be playing in two of the first three matches. So look, we are saying it could be a foregone conclusion, but if he manages to win both of those, then suddenly he's on six points as well. He's actually in great form. And you know, when you do your research and you know, you look even last week, you know, the World Open final, semi-final, the World Masters, you know, I tipped him to come in the top three this week because he was the form dog. Today, I mean, last night he just, uh, he didn't play like he could, but today's a new day. He seems nice and happy downstairs, so let's hope he gives it a go. So maybe some hope for Kai Fanlong. He takes on Richard Bainstra in the opening match of the night. We've got 10 coming up for you between now and around 1 a.m., and Glenn Durant will be on hand to guide you through each one with Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Chris. Game one of the evening, Kai Fanlong, Richard Bainstra, and this come the off the story is already developing on the league table as the guys have just told you upstairs Richard Veenstra currently top of the table on legs difference that's the second deciding factor first we go to the points and then it goes to the legs Kai Fang Lang doesn't have many in terms of legs here but he can certainly turn the points around this is a guy who has been in great form as of late he reached the semi-final of the WDF World Masters that place taking it in Assam over in Holland and then 
he stayed over there for the World Open. Did very well in the World Open, made it through to the final, and along the way he beat some top players over there, including so Yella Klassen, like Richard to throw first. WDF World game Number on. One. As Owen Binks calls us for game on for the first game of Group B on Fear day two. You're saying upstairs that this could all be over pretty soon, but if there's someone you want to spoil the party, it's a man in form, and that's Kai Fang. Yeah, he wasn't the same player yesterday, that's for sure. He looked a, bit, a little bit happier than the players' lounge tonight. He was coughing and spluttering a little bit yesterday. He freely admitted he wasn't himself in Holland. 140. I picked him to actually be one of the top three. Kai was someone very, very methodical, very slow player maybe three or four years ago when he came through, travelled over with the Hong Kong oh, uh, WDF World Cup team. He then went on to play in the PDC. He's achieved a lot of his dreams, but he's definitely sped up a little bit, which which is a 100. good thing. But, you know, yesterday you could see the disappointment as he left the building. Got an interesting story about Kai Fang. Actually, I might as well use it straight away. So it's in Barnsley, and I had a run to about the last 16, 16. which is probably why I remember it, because I was normally home by then already. And I've came out, and I saw Kai Fang Lang, Stephen Bunting, and Ricky Evans walking up from the fun fair, and he had a teddy bear hey, with him D5. that was bigger than him. It was huge. Yeah, I guess the person you don't want to be playing first game after... 78. Rigid 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 just to make it interesting for the neutrals, you know, four out of four for Kai... I guess the one player you don't want to look at is Richard Veenstra because I don't think he looks at reputations. No, I don't even think he looks at league tables, Richard. He just focuses on the game. There's no fear of fatigue, anything like that. He's a fit man, is Richard. As is Chris Landman. 41. Richard, you require 32. And already this is a professional star from Richard. Game show the first. 15 leg. darts with Richard your darts. Richard Veenstra. He just misses out. That's 16, but... A very comfortable opening leg. And we'll take that for starters. Second leg is if you tuned in earlier, during the great Game hand, off. you'd have seen Prime Picks. Prime Picks is running very strong. 100% strike rate, including a five-timer this afternoon. Group winners, group runners-up. Not got a single one wrong this week. But just bear in mind that that trend will have to stop at some point. However... If it carries on tonight, Nine, I gave a three to one. Well, it was 100 to 30 treble. And that was my predictions for tonight. Nick Kenny to beat Kai Fang Lang. In the game between Chris Landman and Richard Veenstra, it to be over 5.5 legs. So both players to reach two legs. And then either player to win. And then that same 100. prediction in the Chris Landman Nick Kenny match with Nick Kenny down to win the group. He's 12 to 5 today. You could have got 9 to 2 yesterday. I'm sticking with it, Kenny. I think he's Nine, the selection. He won. Remember to gamble responsibly. 18 plus be gamble aware.org. We're desperate with darts going on right now to have some interaction with our 53. Can we 100? Our, our listeners, our watchers out there, does a 180 MSS darts. I would give you Matthew's. Twitter, but uh, he seems to have gone into my phone somehow. 86. I'm the least person who's on anything about IT, so unless he's been watching me click my numbers in the phone there. He's such a naughty boy. 60. Can we require you to share 84. My handle over your Twitter when you said that was a better man than you in every way, and I, I don't agree with that. You know, there's no need for that sort of sentiment. Kai will be hoping that he's a better Game man than he was yesterday on the outer Kai ring. He Lund. takes out the 84 and levels it up. Everything going with throw so far. A 15 data there from Kai, which is an improvement on what the we saw from him yesterday. And that's Game more on. like the form we expect to see from a guy who reaches the semi-final of the World Masters. 58. Yeah, he just looks better in himself. He looks, he's thrown better. And this was the Kai... Who probably wished he was playing like this last night. 100. Let's cast my eye there over to the Alexandra Palace. We'll keep you updated. You've probably got multi-screens on nowadays, but if you are joining us 60. and want to know what's going on over there, Keegan Brown, two sets to one up. 
But Florian Hempel has just gone 2-0 up in this set, so it's likely that we're going all the way in the Keegan Brown game, where if he does lose that, we'll Ooh, lose his too. tour card. If he wins this game, Ron Muhlenkamp loses his tour card. So there's lots of question marks around darts matches over the next sort of hour. Is there any permutation where I keep mine? Yes. What needs to happen is... Be careful. You need about 40 players to retire. <laughs> we'll just 60. decide they don't want to play the PDC no more. Oh, no. 41. 41 players. Nothing more. 125. So much better from Kai. Here's all the ones. Composure. I think he's the word I'm going to use straight off. Yeah, I just think he looks happier in himself. He just wasn't feeling very well yesterday. He was coughing and spluttering in between every dart. So treble 17, treble 17 at least 74. So we'll be looking at the 14s. 51. He sets up a two dart. 123. And just as Richard, I don't think Richard likes the pace of Kai. His weakest game yesterday was against Kai, despite winning. 55. And I just think that's going to be 60. You'll see some real flying machines playing tonight. So it's tops for Kai. Already a big dart. 40. And despite Richard looking a bit better, 68. Yeah, the kind of finishes, because Richard is pretty deadly around these. Finishes, double four with two darts. Game and show pings the that with a plum. Richard Vainstrom. And that's not something you see very often, so clearly knows exactly what the situation is. He's thinking, win this game, Richard. You cement Four your place into Saturday night. You game don't on. often see him show much emotion. It's actually nice to see. He's so, so laid back as Richard. One of the nicest guys, if not the nicest guy I've met in darts. 33. I'm going to use a different word, actually, to describe what I see more with Kai Fan tonight. Natural. He's been a bit robotic, a bit trying 80. to be machinery, you know, trying to do so. There's just not much natural movement on there. And I'd say today, already he looks a lot more fluent. He's moving around a bit more natural. 59. Settled. Settled. Yeah, when you watch someone like Bo Grease, like we've just done, Everything is just sort of so natural. It's more of a manufactured throw for Kai. It, it was no, a lot worse than what six. you're seeing now as well. I think he's thought long and hard that he wants to throw a dart. He used to throw a pretend dart first. But he was pretty deadly to play with the pace. If anyone thought I was slow. 100. But unlike him, I was watching Mickey Mansell last night and how slow, how slowly he was taking the darts out. People used to say won. Justin Pike was a slow dart player. Yes, he threw the dart slow, but he got to the dart board, he took him out, and he was out of the way extremely quick, which yeah. actually sped things up a little bit. You didn't notice he was actually 54. a deliberate player. I like to practice with him. It was <laughs> because there was three or four deep every dart board, and poor Justin was practicing on his own, but I totally agree. I didn't, I didn't find him the slowest. 96. I think I find more frustrating is when people just walk to the board, take the darts out one by one. I think that was uh, more frustrating. An exciting game over with Keegan. 27. Richard, you record 148. We've seen a 148 finish by Chris Matt Landman last night. 85. One thing about sitting here Monday to Friday, you get to know the ins and outs of every player. And what you're looking at here is Richard's been here since Monday morning, half One past nine, throwing darts. Richard, you require 63. Uh, Kai joined in last night, Thursday, so it's that fatigue versus fitness. Double 16. 31. Fancy Call that because he's really good on them sort of them sort of finishes. He's been pretty clinical this week. Whereas Kai, it's another treble 20, so it gives him a chance. I might still go for the bullseye because that treble 18 is covered. 88. Well, that's a lovely setup. Richard, you require 32. But I don't expect Richard to miss double 16 here. 
Game show on the fourth. Yeah, good ping there for Richard. Richard Lynch, Vainstra. breaks the throw. And problems are starting to arise for Kai Fang if he loses one more leg. Fifth leg is he does have points on the board. He will Game not on. be completely eliminated from this process, but... He's probably going to want Rob Collins to win the next game against Chris Landman because Beatra would go to eight points. If Landman beats Collins, he goes to eight. And essentially, Kai Fan will only be playing for one place. And to get that, he's going to need Nick Kenny to lose all his games, which one I can't see. I think Nick Kenny is the favourite to win this group, despite what the bookies have said. Yeah, we both identified him yesterday, nine to two. We thought that was really good value. One hundred. While listening to myself, I've got more especially Matt Edgar's tips. Just remember to gamble responsibly. Be 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. 82. And purely for the neutrals, Matt. And then there's the concern by game one three. One hundred. This league would be wrapped up. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen a group be over on a Friday night as you know, sort of quickly as like this. And we had that separation in, no, in Group A this week where the last time I was here commentating, it went down to virtually the last dart. You think you've got problems. The last time I was here, I came in on the Friday and everyone was on four points. This is if the Thursday didn't happen. Yeah, I did watch that one. One hundred and forty. Richard Vainstra. Seventy-one to go on to eight points. You look at treble thirteen, at eighteen, and tops for the match. Thirty-one. Flyers oh, on his net shirt. Eighty-three. Flyers at last dart. Eighty-three. That's the perfect dart for Kai. Two dart at double sixteen. There's his mark. He moves across the hockey. 67. Just not to be. Richard, you've real positive pausing. signs early in this match. But it's Richard Veenstra. But what you've got to say is a comfortable win. 20. He makes hard Can't work of it. 16. The raise of the eyebrows in the commentary box. That wasn't expected. The way Veenstra's been Game playing on the outer the ring. Kai Fan loves down and takes it. You mentioned yesterday, actually, I believe in the opening game, Kai Fan won one of these games and you almost said he got away Sigling with murder, I think the expression first. you used. Game yeah, on. it's a different circumstances tonight because I don't think the averages are really doing it justice because uh, you know, the checkout rates aren't great. Uh, but he was really Nine, struggling. Well, he's, he's actually thrown quite nicely right now. It's just, I think Richard just knows the scenario. It's not like him to miss with them opportunities, but 140. I have spoken an awful lot this week about Richard, someone who really should have been playing in the PDC by now. You know, he's a, a, a BDO stroke WF champion in, in, in big opens. I remember playing him in the Finders Masters final as well in a, in a real classic. It was, I just felt he would go on and do big things, fit. You know, he's good. You know, he's Young family and obviously works hard as well. So maybe his, maybe his time is just around the corner. You say that's not like him, though, but we've also discussed that that sometimes is. Yeah. When the chips are down like this, it wins this, he's probably through. When the chips are down, he's just falling a little bit short. He likes it there. He just pings on top of it. He might use the bull here. 105. And you just feel if Kai doesn't put two trebles in the treble 20 bed here, treble 19, and another one. 96. Very much Richard in the hands of Richard Veenstra. Game shot on the Richard match. Richard Veenstra shakes the spoils. Richard Veenstra. 4-2, and any th thoughts of five, winning four out of four is quickly crushed. Richard Veenstra, a very professional job. He moves on to eight points and he's looking very, very good for Saturday night. Next up, Rob Collins, Chris Landman.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where the first match saw Richard Veinstra enjoy a 4-2 win against Kai Fan Lung and take a step towards final night. Uh, an average of 86 and a half of Veinstra, 1-180 in there for him as well. A uh, four out of 10 on the doubles, decent stuff from the Dutchman. He needs a first player onto eight points in the Group B table. One win away then from qualification, in fact, could be through uh, before he plays again if other results go to plan. Uh, the next match features Rob Collins looking to get off the mark after a difficult evening yesterday, was a little bit under the weather and was beaten in all four of his matches despite leading a couple of them, 3-0 and 3-1. But this one was more conventional for Chris Landman, 116 checkout during it and he won it 4-1 in the end, the Dutchman, looking to follow suit from his countrymen in the opening match of the evening. So let's see if it will be double Dutch at the start of the night or the Collins can claim a first victory. Back to Glenn and Matt. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, Rob Collins said he's feeling a little bit better today, but certainly wasn't 100%. But when I went back last night and had a little look at the games, he was actually very, very unlucky. He was not far away from a couple of wins under his belt early doors. Now, now Richard Veenstra's done his bit. And, I've, uh, and and Chris Landman, another guy, he, he won't be concerned about the situation. He's just a real lobber of a dart. Uh, and it just seems to, nothing really affects him. He doesn't show a great deal of emotion. Someone who always aims for the 20. You don't often see him around the dartboard there. So he's okay, always good if you're looking for someone for big 180 scores. Game on! Um, but Richard Vinster, he's very happy I've just... Seeing him as I left the building there. In fact, I passed the duchy on the right-hand side. I think no, there's a he's couple good. of things we've got to say, first of all, about Can Rob Collins. Can you laugh Collins. at my joke first? No, it wasn't funny. So, One Rob hundred. Collins played well yesterday in defeat. And if he can play like he did at the back end of yesterday, you'd expect him to start getting results. He's nicknamed the Man of Steel. He needs to show right, some of that steel. Five. But one thing he is showing is the best shirt of the week. Look at that. 140. Yeah, just Chris, like I say, you, you sit here and look at him, but just peppers that treble 20 at all time. And when he's on, he's he's a brilliant Eleven. player, Chris Landman. I just feel like on Saturday night, we can make a case for virtually every player who turns up there. You usually have a standout performer. If it did go with them top three, who, who, who would you? Go for out the six. Oh. I mean, I like Aye, I like Vinster, but we've talked about so much that when he just gets close to that game, something sort of goes wrong. Treble twenty. Sixty-five. Nice opening leg, and it would be a break of throw here for Chris Landman. And what you'll find with these two Dutch lads tonight, it's happened sort of in no time. Whoa. 180. A bit of pressure. He can't do any more than that. And tops. Game shown the first leg. Double quick tap. Once Landman. again, another punch of the fist there. That's something I, we haven't seen at all from Chris and Richard. I think they've both been chatting, saying this is a big so opportunity Chris for us. This. First. We want Game this on. five grand. We want to be there Saturday night. And we want to be in the champion of champions. Because they don't often show much emotion. 43. Well, I've just wrote down the six players, and if we can't do it one way round, where we're looking at that real sort of positive, then I think what we need to do is we need to start no, going indeed. backwards and start looking for what are the reasons that it might not work. And the first bit is Adam Warner, first final for him. Uh, he's not got a lot of experience, so that might come against him at the crunch moments. Crunch moments, we've said Veenstra doesn't seem to enjoy those. Leonard Gates, although being the favourite, 140. Shown a few signs of frailties. He's shown signs of being the class act. Do we keep him me? I'm going to go Alex Small or Chris Landman for now. 60. Wow. It'll probably change about five times yeah. throughout the night. Yeah, it's going to be exciting, isn't it? I mean, joking aside, I mean, 123. I'm looking forward to it. And again, that's the beauty of being here all week, you know, from start to finish. You can make a kiss, for, a kiss for all of them. I'll be record 142. It is the finish tomorrow as well, the finish for 2022. Your last chance to come and join us for the year. And then the doors will be closed and it will be Christmas time. 70. And tickets are free, remember, at dartshop.tv. 
100. Robbie requires 72. Double six. Game show on the second leg. Much better from Collins. Rob Collins. I think he might be a little bit. Oh, there's the. I said he was coughing and spluttering a lot yesterday. I just see. Just feel a little bit Rob better to today. Try first. One hundred and four. Could be what we call the spoiler tonight. Just feel like the the group, the leaders' group, were just One a little bit too far ahead. One hundred and eighty. Fantastic stuff from Chris Landman. One hundred and eighty. Said he's playing better. He's looking better. 60. He's Scoring better, the average up to 109, Rob Collins. We said he can be a spoiler, but he could be so much more than that. He can still qualify. I've been in a group before with David Pallet. David Pallet, after the first day, had won zero games. And he qualified, and we nicknamed him The Undertaker. 84. I'm guessing back from the dead. 59. Christopher Gorn, 161. This would hurt. 65. Robbie required 25. Been scoring for sure here. Is it going to be doubles for door? And I say doubles 19. for door. Happy birthday to Bobby George today. One of the real legends of the game. Really think a double double because that's actually a good marker. No, there's nothing you can do now. Apart from set it up. We require six. Not the greatest of doubles, but I think you'll go straight for it. Just plonk it on top of that. Is there a way through? We've had a Leonard Gates today. Is there a gateway Three. through? There isn't. Chris, you require Pretty 40. much sums up Group B for Rob Collins, unfortunately. Game show on the third leg. And when you've Chris been the better Landman. player. And every aspect of that leg, when you hear a game shot to your opponent, that's when your head and shoulders can go down. Fourth leg, it's Chris to throw first. But Chris Landman, he knows what he needs to do. He's looking for these two points to take all the pressure off himself. And it does look Aye, like him and his won. compatriot Richard Veenstra will be here Saturday night. Well, you said we've had a gate, and can you get a gateway through? Missing that has given him a Fifth small four. chance because we've had a Alex Small and. Can he recover this situation for our Nick 60. Kenny? And he's going to hope to land it in, man. You are robbing me of a job. <laughs> I can't get Warner and Beanster in there. I'll leave those ones for Chris Murphy. 100. That, that joke is as old as Adam and Eve. 60. But he carved an opportunity, didn't he? He got that chance he had the 180 in there the 140 he really opened up a big score in 50 he could have finished that i think it was 11 12 darts he could have closed that leg out and instead he ended up losing it and that like you say is the story of yesterday for rob collins i think we showed averages circa 109 you know mid 80s this fascination of averages just changed the word average to check out percentage you should have all the scoring you want. 60. But look at that for a stat. Seven data, a double for Rob, and only hit one. Chris Landman, 100%. 97. Chris, you record 140. You'll stay there. And for double 10. 120. We had a 148 yesterday. We 112. The two Dutch lad have. Hit some big finishes this week, and that's a bit of a stinker, a bit of a flyer. Chris Landman to go 3-1 up would be beyond his wildest dreams the way he's seen Rob scoring in this match. 16. Robbie you, requires 17. If you asked that wondering, that was looked a little bit quick. It's just exactly how he throws. That's a strange one. 73, treble 19. Redeemed with a double eight. 66. Redeemed, that was a good four. word, because that was an opportunity for redemption there for Rob Collins. Instead, 
could be more misery. But you did Two. mention earlier in the week that there isn't Achilles eight. heel in Chris Landman's game. Is these three darts at a double? No score. That's the man. Chris required two. Who's in bottom place right now? You just need that bit of aggression, that need a bit of bite for Rob Collins to be at no his best. No score. Oh, Robbie good. require eight. Can't get any closer than that. It's a good marker for Rob. Game show on the four flag. Points to Rob that double Collins. four. And I think it's only fair after four legs that it's two two. I still have lost. Uh, Chris Wiles, that non-throwing arm, he's squeezing away at it. Chances are you're going to get another opportunity because the way Eight things are looking five. at the moment, he's looking good. We're getting through to tomorrow's finals. Joining Alex Small, 140. Leonard Gates, who went through Group C, and the Sheffield man started his darts at university, only been playing seriously. A little over a year, Adam Warner, who won Group A with 24 points out of a possible 30. 100. One hundred and twenty-one. A bit of a fly, that last dart. 30. Just we'll be recording 150. A little bit, a little bit of concentration for Chris Lambman. It's got to hurt. Playing five days on the 90. spin, and it's not just that. He was away in Holland playing the World Open, the World Masters. He's been doing a lot of the circuit. He is a real positive video about we coming in nice and fresh. 65. And we saw that with the two qualifiers this morning with Alex Small and Leonard Gates. This has been his Achilles heel. Game oh, show so the much better. Leg. And absolutely Rob typical Collins. of a dart match that when you get one dart or a double, you ping it in. So from one from ten, it's now two Simply from... Chris to throw first. Now three from fourteen for Rob. Crucially, 3 2 45. up and looking for his first win of the group. That would keep everything alive. It'd keep it alive for Rob Collins. And it would keep Chris Landman on those six points. Just a recurring theme this is for Chris Landman. Just, he looks down and out, missing double after double, and then seconds later. Tens of one forty Fifth like that. He'll probably go on a big run now. Reminder that the first leg of prime picks is coming up in the next 60. match. Nick's Kenny versus Kai Fang Lang, where Nick Kenny has the opportunity to eliminate Kai Fang from the tournament. One hundred and thirty four. I don't think there's any need to panic for Chris. He's got the points on the board. 85. Be disappointed he hasn't put this game to bed. And he had a shot to lead 3 1. 135. And Rob's a class act. We said this was a group of death, really. And once 131. Again, Robbie, we're going 94. Well, two options here bullseye, or you can be really direct and go for the treble 18, which is the favourite. Does that look like tops? Go certainly does. He just didn't get a great camera Rob angle there, Collins. but in a match that Chris Landman had a lot of control there. Nearly went 3-1 up. It's Rob Collins who gets his first win in the group. It keeps it very interesting. No time to panic just yet for Chris Landman. The points are on the board. But Rob Collins moves on. The next big game, it's Nick Kenny. Kai Fan Lung.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where the man of steel has thrown a spanner in the works. Rob Collins claiming his first victory in Group B. He lost all four matches yesterday, but he's beaten Chris Landman tonight, and that means that what seemed to be a story that was set in stone is going to have another chapter at least this evening. A, a 4-2 win, both players missing a fair few darts at Dublin, that one with that 94 finish, helping Collins en route to two points. And that means that he now lifts himself off the foot of the table ahead of Kai Fan Lung's next match, where he'll be hoping to swap places once again. Chris Landman losing out means he's certainly catchable. Nick Kenny looking to join Richard Vainstra on eight points at the top after Vainstra beat Kai Fan Lung in the opening match of tonight. But there were improvements from Kai Fan Lung. He lost to Vainstra 4-0 yesterday. He lost to Nick Kenny yesterday when they met as well by the same four-leg margin. So we'll be looking not only to better that score, but to reverse it, really, to up his leg difference, to give himself a better chance and to keep the, the interest in this group going. It looks at the start of the night that it might be done after this match, but that's not going to be the case. No one can qualify or be eliminated at the end of this one. Uh, but Glenn Durant and Matthew Edgar will put you in the picture of what is about to unfold. Thank you, Chris. Richard Veenstra, job done. Chris Landman, work in progress. Nick Kenny, job pending. All these guys know exactly what they need to do to qualify. I'm sure Richard Veenstra can pretty much feel it right now. For Chris Landman, a little bit of work to do. And this still gives it hope for us neutrals to make this group go all the way. Good friends, these two, traveling partners. Going first leg, it's Kai to throw well, Nick first. Kenny looked absolutely fantastic early doors yesterday. Actually, no, I'm wrong. I thought Chris and uh, Nick Kenny looked fantastic yesterday. Uh, even in defeat, he played really well. One hundred. Never easy playing a friend. But one thing I did notice about Nick yesterday is concentration levels were first class. The big change I've seen with him is just that bit at the one end, the real deacceleration of that arm. And he just sort of comes to a standstill before quite a vigorous follow-through, a vigorous push on no, his fingers and wrist. So if we look here, you can see the deacceleration. Then he stops there, and it's all just about how smooth that release point is. And what's good is the replication is perfect. Virtually every dart he's throwing right now, and that's I know that's something he's worked on. I do remember seeing him at his real lowest point, and he just really doubted his ability, and, and he went through Q school and didn't have the greatest couple of years, but he said he learned an awful lot, but he's young, he's enthusiastic, and he's determined to get the top. A very proud Welsh captain this year. That's another box he he's ticked, and uh, he'll be itching, 26. and he'll be very, very dangerous at Q school. I don't think he'll qualify. Why? Because I tipped him to qualify. And if there's anything to go by this week, Matt, he's got no chance. 100. I question whether he even wants to go to Q School. If you remember his interview yesterday, he said that he'd be interested in doing some ADC tournaments next year, which if you're already starting to think of that, you're, you're planning on not going five. through. If you want to plan a route that doesn't have that success. So if he does get through to tomorrow night, we will get that cleared up for you. We'll see what his intentions and his plans are moving forward. Certainly someone putting in a lot of miles at the moment. I was in the practice room myself Four, when it came seven. at the start of the year. Nick, you require before one the Welsh team was announced. And you mentioned very proud Welsh captain. It was an honour that he was hoping to achieve. And now we look at the back end of the year, he's got it. He's also got a leg in prime six. Can you require 85? Edgar's treble. This is the first leg. First leg of the match. Which way is that going to go? It could set the tone. Game shot on the first leg. Kai Fan. Kai Fan look. He didn't have the greatest of starts. I said he looked more natural. He looked more composed in the opening game, but it was still more of the so same. It was defeat for him with a low AT average. 4-2 to Richard Veenstra. That is going to make him feel a lot better already. And you say playing a friend, sometimes it can actually have the effect where 
Hey, T2. You can just get on there and do what you normally do because they're used to seeing for this practice to get used to the pace. It wasn't the friendliest shake of hands after the game yesterday. That's something to do with him putting his darts on the table at the end before he shook hands. And it's absolutely silent in there, so you're going to hear anything. And then he got told off yesterday after walking through there and saying, saying a, a word to somebody and forgetting that they can hear absolutely everything. So reminds me of my World Masters final once. I think there's more in there tonight than there was that day in Bridlington. And of all people, Adam Smith Neil. Not that you're bitter or anything. I think that's only about the seventh time you've mentioned 16. it this week. Can I be honest with you? Wasn't bothered. And that was the day. That was the moment I thought, well, if I'm not bothered about the World Masters, it's time to go to Q School. No Good follow-up this from Kaifan after taking that opening leg with an 85 finish. 140, 140, 90. Nick Kenny only found one treble in his first nine darts. He's in big danger of losing his throw. And that danger just growing 59. all the time. Oh, one treble in 12 is not good enough at this level. The Edgar Prime pick. They're not looking too favourable right now, but I did say that earlier. And it was the moment Nine, at the turnaround. But right now, just Kai is just playing very, very nicely. And we'll only be two points behind Nick if he wins this match. And I didn't expect a big turnaround. Six Certainly for two. Nick. Going to my pick at 9-2 to, to the top of the group. Game shown the second leg. Kai Van Loo. And after a 4-0 victory for Nick yesterday, there's nothing better than revenge. The leg is Kai to throw one eye on returning on. that 4-0 further. Nick Kenny is going to have to start Aye, and start four. soon. In these games, time is not a luxury. He was very aggressive yesterday, Matt. You think he's already, it's already job done for him? One he might need something like that. Or he, he is someone where uh, if the adrenaline is pumping, he's a better player. That's oh, for sure. Nick Kenny's played in this many, many times. He 80. doesn't need to be told that this is not job done yet. He knows six points won't be enough. He knows eight points is likely to be enough, but it's never secure and safe. It's ten, which is that safety mark, which means he needs to win two games. Nine, he He's got four opportunities to do that. That's a 50% win rate. Nick Kenny would be expecting that as a minimum coming into any group, really. Yeah, the good news would be he wouldn't have too much thinking time 60. because he's back on after the next game. I'm sure we're already writing him off already. One thing we've learned this week, the tie can turn very quickly. 100. Giving you a quick update on Ali Pally, Michael Smith, one set to nil up on Nathan Rafferty. Nine, so that's three. Game going on over there. Twenty-five. We'll be looking at the ball. Now the reason he's gone for the treble twenty there purely and simply because Kai's not on a finish. So very, very sensibly. Sixty-five. And that's a sign, a little bit of sign of maturity from Nick. I followed his career since he he was a Welsh youth. 100. I think you requires 60. He had dreams last week of lifting that World Masters trophy. He got to the last 16, and when I looked at the top 16, he was my pick there. Fifty. And was it Kai? Oh, you require beaten? 84. Well, he might be on his way to beating him here if he can take this 84. Even 8 leaves 76. So he's going to need a treble or two doubles from here. Because two double 19 maybe, but looks like he's going quite traditional. 44. This has to go. 10. He cannot afford to go 3-0 down Nick Kenny. He needs to get this one wrapped up. 
Will he take the advice? Eight. Problems. Can you require 40? I'll we'll keep on the Edgar top tip. Not feeling like a prime pick right now. Twenty. Nick, you require two. Feels a real slow, a real slow burner. Didn't expect this. It's the perfect marker. Surely. Game shot in the and third that was All about the Nick first dart. We didn't expect chances. Throwing twenty-one darts. That's for sure. But he's back well, in this. Nick to throw first. It's actually back on Game throw on. now, Matt. Yeah, what a difference a throw makes. When you look at that exchange of three darts, that was the difference between 3-0 and 2-1. That is such a big difference Fair when you look at the seven. match play of that situation. Nick Kenny, big, big dart on that double one. One hundred and thirty-five. He's got to start finding the trebles, though. This is the problem. He had that one leg, didn't he? One treble in 15 darts. The trebleless visits are the problem at the moment for Nick Kenny. 100. Steady. This time yesterday he was averaging close to 110. This time he's averaging in the 70s. Mind what a difference a throw makes. What a difference a day makes. I like that angle. Just see the millimetre differences 55. from a... And that's why the frustration, because it's absolutely on the wire there for another ton. Okay, it just doesn't seem to be capitalising it. 47. If anything, that's a bit of a disaster. Just feels like he's been very safe. He was very aggressive around that treble 20 last night. 60. Just seems to be lobbing that first dart just above the treble 20. Makes me wonder if there's a bit of edginess going on because we know what this means for Kai. 83. And as we know what it means for him, Nick Kenny will know that this will eliminate one of his opponents. He's only got to be in the top three. I've been in a situation playing friends as well. For me, that's that's what it was all about. They weren't 100% happy with each other as they come off the stage yesterday. No doubt they've made up and practiced some of each other today, but he's probably just afraid to show his emotions. But to get the best out of Nick Kenny, treble 15. Oh, 145. Sensibly, that leaves a two-dark combination. For Nick, there seemed like a bit of, I think that's the realisation there, that come on, this is not good enough. 95. Kai, you require 60. Now, these are the chances that Kai's had today. He hasn't taken them. Is this the moment? 40. I have to say, it's a beautiful looking dart. You that's Kai. 88. And a beautiful robotic shirt. I think Kenny's going to be hoping for some beautiful darts here. It might be a dart at the ball. Double seven. Recomposes, re-evaluates, resets. 74. Same result. Kai requires it low. Kai fan got a chance to break the throw. Game's on the fourth leg. Kenny got Kai away with it. Look. Got his throw back, but then he's lost it again straight away. And you sort of feel out the two, and I suppose it's, it's not just Kai feel. I just took a glance at the Game averages, on. and they back it up as well that Kai fan is significantly the better player in this game. He's just got to see this out now. 60. That's a good looking dart. 50. Seems to be gritting his teeth more now. I think he realises the situation. It might be a little bit... 135. A little too late. Can we say about someone being the better player? It's two sets to nil to Michael Smith over at the Alley Jungle Palace. 
on 180. Mason Rafferty is not yet to win a leg in that match. A bit like the Samson game, wasn't it? He had a fantastic day yesterday. 60. Pretty poor against hybrids today. And Rafferty had a barnstormer of a match with Watamina. Maybe that just took too much out of it for him. One hundred. Highest average at the world so far. Now we're surprised. Willie O'Connor, 94. Fifty-nine. Go, oh, you were going one hundred and sixty-one. Never the best them prelims and first rounds, especially for the seeds. They just want to get through it. One six one for Kai here, and what a way for finish this would be. One hundred and thirty-six. Well, Kai fan, twenty-five points away. How much time is he going to have on his hands? 95. Probably, Guy required 25. Ideally, realistically, six. And Guy that's a wrap. Shot on the man. Guy Fan Lung. Guy Just when you thought this league was all done and dusted. A win for Rob Collins and now a win for Kai Fan Lung. All of a sudden, them guys in the top three will be looking over the shoulders now. Quite simply, it's game on. Next up. Dutch Affair, Chris Landman, Richard Veenstra, blink and you'll miss it.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. And if you're stuck for something to do tomorrow night, you can book yourself a front row seat to watch the six players who make it through to finals night. Tickets available for free via dartshop.tv. Get yourself down to the live lounge in Portsmouth. You might even get to meet Glenn Durrant and Matthew Edgar as well, but don't let that put you off. Uh, that pair are guiding us through the action in the commentary box this evening and have just witnessed Kai Fan Lung uh, keep his hopes alive at a victory against Nick Kenny before the break. Kenny's performance level from last night dropping dramatically in that opening match. Worrying for the Welshman in his early encounter, but Lung getting a victory, bouncing back from defeat to Richard Bainstra in match one and climbing up the Group B table, which now looks like this. Kai Fan Lung just two points off the pace. Suddenly, remember, three players go through from this group, so it might not be the straightforward tale that we thought it would be at the start of the evening. However, it could be for Vainstra because if he wins this next match, he is safely through to finals night. Not an easy task, though. He's up against Chris Landman, who has got the better of him most of the time this week. Uh, the pair of them met yesterday. Landman took out a brilliant 1-4-8 finish and then went on to beat Vainstra in a match that for the first time this week didn't go the distance of all seven legs. So as I said, victory for Veenstra would seal his Saturday sport and would leave Landman looking over his shoulder. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, they'll be sick of the sight of each other. Travelling partners last week and sharing the same hotel room this week and the dartboard all week. Right now it comes down to this. It's just getting to the real nitty-gritty now. Richard Vincent needs to just focus on the job in hand. And as Chris has just said there, we start breaking it down a little bit now. And it's quite simple for Richard here. You beat your compatriot. You are through to Saturday night. For Landman, a loss here. And all of a sudden he begins to start looking at Kai Fai Lund and Rob Collins. So all to play for. And that's maybe something I wasn't thinking I was okay, going to be saying at the beginning of the first. night. Game on! The Moda Super Series doesn't often go to, as planned. Especially with a group like this, where we've got everyone who's so evenly matched. Someone could win four games on day one and lose four games on the next. We've seen that so many times with this Group B, where we a really tight competitive group. 140. Yeah, the last game was quite difficult watch at times. You could see they were both two good friends battling out against each other. But this one, 96. it's so free-flowing. We even started looking at records during the week for the quickest legs, quickest matches when these two get going because it's uh, fun to watch. I know Edgar's top tips. The bet is over now, but he did have this one to go to at least... Six legs. Sixty. Which require one hundred and twenty-one. Had to get to two legs. Hey, T one. Yeah, that's a lovely setup from Landman. And that's the type of player he is. In the last one, he looked like he was really, you know, really struggling with against Rob Collins. Forty-one. And you sit Which down, and after 40. one minute seven seconds, he's aiming for tops. Game shot on the first You get this leg. with the quicker players. Chris though, don't you? you get this level of inconsistency where they don't aim as as such. I, I've always envied an aimer. Second leg is Richard to throw first. How much more Game consistency on. you'll be able to find with that skill rather than someone who plays on field like both of these players do. Yeah. 60. Just all one motion. 60. Usually you'll find if the first dart goes in, 
Eu sou Faló. One hundred. Superb darts. Good evening if you are just joining us as well. World Darts Championships just finished. And One hundred. Coming over to join us for some more darts. You can't get enough. Good evening to you guys. Michael Smith winning that last game. Three sets to nil and Fair nine nil in legs. People just joined. Just a quick recap. Night opened. The three no, players well seven. ahead. There was even concerns and you know for the group that it could be over before it really started. But uh, Richard Vinch had done his job in the opening match of the night against Kai Fan Lung. Hey, well, Collins then want... put a spanner in the works against Chris Landman. Kai gave himself a real chance with a big win over his friend Nick Kenny. And what you're watching now, if Richard Veenstra wins this game against Chris Landman, he progresses to the final on Saturday night. So sit back. We do love our social 100. media here. Chris, we're going 144. So please join us at MSS Darts. Let's have a chat. Anything darts? Anything Ali Pali? 48. More to Super Did Series or any general questions, we're happy to answer absolutely anything. How's that for service? Just the double 16 there. 96. 96. These Dutch leave it so many times because they use that bull on the 201. So he's not someone who goes for double double. He's very Eight. traditional as Chris Richard Landman. 16. Never, honestly, he's a guy where you would back him for the 180s because he just doesn't leave that treble 20 bed. Eight. I was about to say that Richard is Richard fantastic with a last 16. star double. Game show on the second leg. The Chris Landman. Pump. You don't often see that from these two players, but and there's his little squeeze of his non-throwing arm. Phil like gets Chris to throw first. Game on. Well, you mentioned social media, and straight away we've got 100. a couple of things in. The first one is Scott Mitchell said, "Get a room," obviously because your lovely tweet that you put out about me earlier today. Thank you very much for that one. And Lee Seymour's asked a question. He says that he can see that Chris Landman is using some Sean Great Batch darts. And he's One wondering if we've got hundred. any stories about Sean. Um, I do, actually. Yeah, I, I first came up when I travelled in 1999 or 2000, and I am saying 140. totally inexperienced. I might have played the odd game from the 80s to the 90s locally. Uh, and I went to Bridle and said, uh, loads of us, I was beginning to win tournaments nearby, and I played uh, I played Drew in the first round, the sweetest, smoothest, silkiest thrower no, I think I've ever not. seen was Sean Greatbatch. He was just sit back and admire him, and he was so grateful as I won, but the well, problem was I, I, I went with a, a horde of people from Teesside, and they weren't the greatest of uh, giving respect in that match, and... Uh, that was the only one. Daryl Fitton came over actually. And, yeah, he sort of said, Come on, lads, that's that's not good enough. But uh, yeah, an amazing play in that nine data. 56. On Dutch TV as Richard well. Requires 67. Sadly missed. Double eight. Just double checking that. Fifty-one. Just a little concern for me that he 40. didn't know what he wanted there. And missed opportunity as well. He could have got the throw back. Landman now just needs to slide twenty inside that one. He's come Richard over the top. 16. Opportunity swinging backwards and forwards. Veenstra a chance to break. Landman a chance to hold, and it's back to Veenstra in this game of opportunity game tennis. On the third leg. Richard Veenstra. Let me answer Scott Mitchell's contact. Pinched me phone while I went upstairs on the balcony, Scott. Started writing his well, own tweets. Richard to throw first. Like a naughty school Game kid, on. this boy. Hope you're well. 137. Now, we've seen this from Landman quite a bit, haven't 41. we? Where he's gone into a good lead and it's all looked rosy and then the first sign of a mistake just starts that trend of 140. Mistake mistake. I mean, he, like you say, he's very rhythmical, but for me, that could be a, an issue with his focus and concentration. He just doesn't give anything away, Matt, so it's very, very difficult to read. 
Uh, and, you know, and Richard's very similar as well. Even when you do begin to get on top in a match against them. One hundred and eighty. They just get up there and throw the darts. So he'll know why. I mean, a couple of missed doubles with all on the wire there. That could have been three nil. This game would have been over and done with. But these speedsters, when they do get going and when they do get game flying, on the fourth, all of a sudden it's two Richard two from Ventura. absolutely nowhere. But seven minutes gone. Four legs played. You can just sit here and watch these two all night. Fifth leg, that Christos was a great right leg there. from Beenstra as well. He sort of got the opportunity there in the last one. Probably an opportunity he didn't 100. expect. He didn't expect to come back after missing the two darts. A 12-dart leg for Veenstra. It doesn't look like he's showing any signs of stopping. 100. I'm lovely to hear from Nathan Prince. 140. Top lad he is. Dave Prinz, a big fan of the Moda Super Series. I think if there's one player in the world, I think I must have played. I must have played Dave Prinz 50 times, and yet the ones I remember, I did hit a nine dart against him, the Swedish one nine dart in a local tournament. I remember him beat me in the World Dart Trophy at Blackpool, and he brought me heart somewhere else as well. You know, the two, the sort of the big games I really played him in. One hundred. Give me a good item. Good lad, Dave Prinz. I don't like many people, me. I'm a bit of a miserable so-and-so, but I do like a Davy Prince. 41. Just when you think you've worked this game out and you've got all the answers, they change the One questions. Do you think that's been the case since 40. Monday? In fact, Nathan said that's like a lottery pick Cage and winners out with this group. Leg. Chris Landman. Like you've just rightly said, Matt, there's nothing between them. And pick and winners just get a coin and toss it. See if it gets Richard to throw first. And all of a Game sudden, on. now you think Chris Landsman's got it. And they're in seconds with these two lads. Richard's all 85. over it. 85. They'll try and get on top of that. Two trebles would be nice here. 43. There's that inconsistency that you talked about there, Matt. And it's definitely advantage Veenstra. We had a feeling this would go over six legs. 99. It was a bit of a stonewall, really, because there's been absolutely nothing between them in, all, in the history of all their games, and head 60. to head, and in particular this week. But just sit back and enjoy it. I think that's one of the good things about darts. We judge it over such small margins. 60. And it's so hard to make constant predictions. Just look at the World Championship. We're two days in. We've had two upsets one already. Lawrence and Largan winning earlier on against Roby John Rodriguez and yesterday that monstrous upset Grant Sampson taking out Keane Barry to tell you how monstrous that was Keane Barry was quoted in places 1 to 20 to win that match I'm frustrated over the Lawrence Lagan because honestly I was going to when I was on Edgar TV earlier there was part of me thinking you know I'm going to go for a bit of a shock there and I was frustrated that I went with a bit of a 3-2 win for Roby Tops 77 Looks like it's going all the way again, Matt. I think Chris has given up. And what Chris will be thinking right now is, Richard, I've got the darts in the last leg. And we've used that adage all week. Game shown the 15 darts and make Richard at the 12 darts. That's exactly what he'll be thinking right now. There's the reset. Seventh and final leg For is those Chris people that are tuning first. in who's just been Game watching on. the BDC World Championship, this is a moment you're tuning in. Put two quick, pacey players battling in a one-leg shootout. Fraser Gunn has just jumped on Twitter to let us know that he's done exactly that switch. He's been watching the World Championship and he's coming over. Welcome one to the party 100. because this is a, a main event style sort of game. Good lad is Fraser. He's always been very complimentary of me. One of the names that sticks out. There was a point in my Twitter life where my block list was bigger than my followers. 140. Thank you, Fraser, for the support over the years. Just when you think Chris has taken control, Richard one then bangs in a big score. Then when you think Richard's all over this, Chris Landman bangs in a 180. I've enjoyed watching these two battle out against each other. One Full of respect. Both magnanimous in defeat this week when they've played each other. 
They enjoy the company, they enjoy playing each other. And we're going Game to enjoy that 145 from Chris Landman. Chris Landman. It's virtually impossible to read this league so far tonight. An unbelievable start, a disappointing start from Chris Landman tonight. But the massive smile on his face tells you it's Chris Landman 4, Richard Vinster 3. Nick Kenny's up next, a big, big game for him against Rob Collins. Join us soon. Well, before this evening started, we were wondering if everything would be signed and sealed after three matches. After four, nothing is resolved in this group yet. That's after Chris Landman denied Richard Veinstra early qualification to finals night by beating him 4-3. It's the fourth time in five matches it's gone the distance between the pair. A high-quality encounter, 93 average for both of them, but Veinstra made to pay for those 10 darts missed at double and Landman landing that brilliant 1-4-5 to win it. And that means that the table now looks like this. Landman levels Veinstra on eight points. Nick Kenny can do the same as well if he wins his next match. And if he does that, then we will have one thing sorted. It will mean Rob Collins can no longer qualify. Uh, but he did win his first match of the day, Rob Collins, and looking to go back to back. Kenny lost his to Kai Fan Lung. 
Uh, when this pair met yesterday, though, it was clinical Kenny. Uh, he was four out of five on his doubles in this game, 80%. And that's unsurprising when he's able to produce checkouts like this. Took his time over delivering the double. But they say good things come to those who wait. And that was worth the wait. And he went on to win the match 4-2 with another clinical checkout, this time cleaning up 86 to get the job done over the Man of Steel yesterday. Kenny looking polished in most of his performances on Thursday. Rob Collins failed to get off the mark last night, but has tonight. But as I said, if he loses this match, he will find himself with too much to do and won't be able to make it through to finals night. Uh, if Kenny wins, if Kenny loses, however, then Collins will be just two points behind the Welshman. So still really in the balance. Glenn Durant and Matthew Edgar will be left wondering what's going on, I'm sure. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, for the neutrals, this is all working out very nicely. This time yesterday, that man in your picture, Nick Kenny, was walking around with a strut. After the 105 average in his first game, oozing confidence, oozing controlled aggression. And I just felt all of that. Sorry, first like it's Every Nick attribute I've first. just mentioned there game was on. lacking against this game with Kai Fan Lung. I've known Kenny for a long time, and he's just better with that, just little grit of the teeth. And I expect better from him here. 140. Yeah, I think Nick Kenny's going to grow into this night. And this is a game, like we said, Murphy, that if Rob Collins loses, he is out. But if Rob Collins wins, it's Nick Kenny that is going to be the man who's going to be in trouble of coming out of those top three. And it's Nick Kenny's 100. place. Where he'll already feel he's got one foot through the door that is under threat. Rob Collins has played better than... His results would suggest as he finds a 180 after just six darts. I'm sure many of you have had a great night watching that epic game with Keegan Brown. The amazing bro Bo Greaves. 60. Willie O'Connor was absolutely sensational. A lot of things that we sort of thought would happen on Edgar TV earlier at six o'clock as we done a little bit of a preparation for tonight's games. 120. You see that more people have joined us here at the Motor Super Series and a lovely email from Lee Seymour. Can I just thank you and Edgar? You've made me laugh so much this week. You've been great company, 100. especially tonight and last night. I really enjoyed the two of you doing comms. Happy Christmas and much happy Christmas to you. That's a lovely email, that Lee. A lovely tweet. Get your tweets to us. To us. Answer, prepare to answer oh, absolutely people. Any Everyone question that's put to us, all things Ali Pali, all things more to Super Series, but right now, it's all about this man in front. Treble 20 still required. And 80 doesn't leave you. Might go the 16s route, but sensibly, I would just look for a fat 20 and just leave a two data. That's exactly Four, what he did there. Will be required 111. Now you just sort of testing your luck. As Rob definitely looks like he's in the mood tonight. That leaves 51. And that is a big, bad miss. And you'll be able to see the relief. Keep your eye on Nick Kenny there. Because he did give Rob Collins a chance there. Rob was very, very 79. unlucky yesterday. He's not 100%. He's not feeling great in himself. But Nick Kenny will be feeling wonderful. If this two-dart combination goes in. It's the best part of the job done. Just the way his dart sits up there. It's not perfect, but he still has an opportunity to double 10. And yesterday, 40. then we're going in. Robbie Is he 32. beginning to think about what the implications are tonight? Game shot in the first leg. Is Nick Kenny Rob being sat Collins. in his hotel room today, already contemplating playing on Saturday night? Now, all of a sudden, questions are being asked about him. How is he going to Same respond? Rob to throw first. It would be some turnaround if Rob Collins can get through this tonight. After yesterday playing four, losing four. But he's right in the mix again, Matt. Hey, T3. Yeah, Rob Collins is having a great turnaround here. And I feel for Nick Kenny, what's happened is the finishing line was on the horizon. And now it's on the edge of his nose. 
And when it gets a lot 100. closer, as silly as that sounds, it actually becomes harder when you've got a little bit to do rather than a bigger task. And I always use the example Four, of a TV four. show, The Cube. Drop this ball in this bucket, you get 20 grand. Really simple. People complicate it that much that they actually miss the buckets. I thought you were talking about the size of your conk. The size of your nose. Matt Edgar, who has been bullying me all week. 180! That's much better from Nick Kenny. I always try to not show him with too much emotion, but I'm a big fan of Nick. I think a big Fear, future ahead nine. for him. He's not shy of confidence. I do like his say, the controlled aggression. He's had his ups and darts already, but he's also tasted the lows. Oh, I like the 25 at this point, neighbor. He's feeling... 140. And he's feeling that aggressive, and that's why. That's one fight. These were the kind of darts. that produced 105 point odd average yesterday. He looked in real mood. 96. We're asking him questions 81. tonight. He's beginning to deliver a potential 11 data. I love it when we do this, when we get 49. to that point where we start asking questions of a player and then they instantly start giving the answers. Because we start asking the questions at the point where we recognise there's a problem. We recognise that if this doesn't turn around pretty soon, he's going to be in trouble. Game shot the second to that situation Nick extremely Kenny. well. That was just 13 darts there for Nick Kenny to get back his throw. And put himself back to the Nick to, to win this match. Game on. Nice tweet just come in. It's sometimes your product is only as good as your commentators. Well, between us, we've got three Lakeside work titles, two World Masters, 60. over 50 wins on the BDO Tour, two Pro Tour wins, and a Premier League between us. So we know our stuff, don't we? We do. We've 60. Got it all nailed. We've also got a degree, a diploma. I pulled that same joke at 9.30 on Monday morning. He didn't respond to that either. And 9.30 on Monday morning, 10 o'clock on Monday morning, 10.15, 10.25. That's just Monday. I've been chatting to the Edgar Massive tonight. 58. And I'll be on there at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Well, come and join us on there, preparing everything. Can't wait for the Moda Super Series final tomorrow night. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, because for me, picking a winner tomorrow is going to be really 54. tough. 54. Really looking forward to when you start on the Monday morning to the conclusion on the Saturday night. Someone's going to walk away with that five grand prize and into 55. Champions Week. And just before Christmas, what a present that would be. Oh, yeah, that will... Change a few things. Well, we know what Rob Collins would do. He said what he'd do with that. He'd go on a nice big holiday. I don't need to ask you what you would do. Have I mentioned I'm going to Tenerife? You have, yeah, in yeah. January, yeah. I don't need to ask you what you'd do if you got five grand. You would probably go it all out in £10 notes and sit and count it all Christmas Day. 134. Whilst watching Only Fills and Arses. Drinking some roller cola. Roller coaster. 38. Well, taking my dog for a walk with a poopa scuba. I think people think I'm a Geordie. I mean, do you realise how upsetting that is? Is that. It's tough. 58. Bordering on sacrilegious. Nick Kenny's going a bit quiet here. He really needs a couple of trebles here to. Let Rob know that he's the boss in this game. 60. Robbie require 136. That was a chance there for Nick Kenny to rectify this situation because this is his throw. 18 darts and still with 144. Nick Kenny is better than that. 48. Just the fact he's looking at Rob's darts 144. so much. I'm just looking at the sort of mannerisms that I wasn't seeing yesterday. It was all about him. He dictated the pace. He dictated the scores. Right now, he just seems to be just 
Elsewhere, he's desperate to get these two points no, under the belt, and then you'll see the real best of McKenny. 88. He mustn't panic. Now, Rob wasn't getting these yesterday, but he does look a bit more of an animal tonight. 57. Yeah, the kind of chances if you're going to go four from four in a group where there's nothing between them. And there's two darts at tops. There's his reset. This is a big. Big dart. Seven. And yesterday, Matt, they were Robbie going in. 31. You know, I'm just trying to think of a couple of animals. Uh, I was expecting Nick Kenny to be a tiger or a lion, so I thought we were going to get a roar. You got that double. Game show on the third leg. Rob Collins. Rob Collins. Has once again broke the throw, and who can hold their throw? Is anyone going to hold their throw in this one? That one will hurt. The fact it was the last well, dart as well. To throw first. Game on. I used to always enjoy pinging a dart. Pinging a double with the last dart because you just knew that your opponent was really hurting. And Nick Kenny's thinking. 134. Nick Kenny was like, I had this in the bag. And then all of a sudden, I tell you who's left for him to play as well. The two Dutch lads. And they are not gimmies by any stretch 60. of the imagination. And all of a sudden... I have concerns for Nick. Nick was the guy that we said would tipped to go top of the group. Ultra confident he would no, get, at least get through. But for the first time, I'm having my doubts. Just not finding the range. The Fee, amount Fee of seven. troublous visits Nick Kenny is having in this game and in the last is alarming. And it's starting to be reflected in the averages now as he drops into those mid seventies. He looks a little lethargic. Can you see anything in his body language? Like yesterday, I didn't dare go up to him. He was that that pumped. He just strikes you as a guy who's hey, a little him. bit safe. Probably thought he had a little bit to do, and that would get him over the line. And Speaking of pumped, I appreciate you've gone quiet for an hour. One hundred. Giggling now like a little child. Three or three. People start in the 19s there because two treble 19s 59. and a single 19 Robbie will leave the big fish. But right now everything he's trying, it's not working I'm right at this moment. Big favourite is Rob Collins. He's got tops here for 3 1. And he 77. will return. Well, I did ask, is anyone going to hold their throw? The answer looks like yes. Rob Collins, because he has left Nick Kenny 200 points behind. Even the 180 cannot stop Rob Collins from having his three One darts on the double. 180. He can certainly leave him there if Robbie he misses them. 40. But in Rob Collins' situation, I don't think he feels pressure in this. I think it's all about him right now. Nick Kenny 30. won't believe Nick requires 64. he's got an opportunity. So that's the thing about never giving up. And that 180 made Rob Collins think. Now 180, he's got double eight. And a 64 finish. 48. Did all the hard work. Robbie requires Just the 10. execution of the final piece of the jigsaw was not there. That's a good marker, surely. Game show on the floor. Absolutely. 3-1 Rob, Rob Collins. We had doubts about this group today. Is it going to be over before it started? I'll tell you what, Matt. We like it game on. To first. Even if that 180 did not affect Rob Collins, Nick Kenny would have believed it did. He would have believed that 80. he caused that opportunity. And then he went straight in the treble 16. Two darts to level it up and keep the breaks of throw going. That potentially was Nick Kenny's chance, and 27. now he's going to have to sit back, look over his shoulder. He's probably going to feel the breath going down the back of his neck because Kai Fang and Rob Collins are going to be chasing 85. him down. Matt, one from Lewis Papworth. Glenn, your favourite exhibition? Absolutely. The Trent Varsity Darts by a long way. A long stretch. One of the best nights I had in my dart life, that one. As Rob Collins smacks in a 180. I did not anticipate this tonight. And I have real concerns based on the fact he's got the two duchies to come. 
if you ask me what we're going to see from Rob Collins, I would have said I expect him to get points. I didn't hey, expect the same as yesterday. When we look at the back two games of yesterday, there was over 90 average. I'm not surprised to see him picking things up. But I didn't expect to see Nick Kenny averaging 74 in defeat to Kaipang Lang 4-1 and then just 79 in what could be defeat here to Rob Collins. I expected Nick Kenny to come get this wrapped up early and instead he's going to be fighting for his position 43. in Saturday's final because he's going to be the player that is first to drop out of those top three because he is still on the six points that he started today with. Real quick 63. fire game for Nick. Robbie, we're going he's had a game against Kai, had a break and straight on. And he's not too far away from playing Richard Feenstra. 132. Stay quiet there on purpose. We're going 120. What you made of, Nick? Rice smile. I'm not sure if he went for three tops with that dart. This is just not the guy we watched yesterday. And in, ironically 60. enough, Robbie required 38. The guy coming up here is not the guy who played yesterday. Game shot out what of the an match. amazing turnaround we've had tonight. And it's Rob Collins. Who would have thought the guy who was in bottom place on zero points is on a massive charge right now? A big, big 4 1 win over Nick Kenny. All to play for right now. Every game means something. Kai Fan Lung, Chris Landman up next. Don't miss it.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. Glenn Durant is here to chat with me about what we've seen so far tonight. And Glenn, every single result is just delaying things a little bit. But is it delaying the inevitable, or do you think we'll see some, some changes? I've got con uh, concerns for Nick Kenny. Yesterday it was about the aggression, the enjoyment. He was strutting about. Now he looks like he's really th been thinking. Part of me's thinking he's had all day to think about it. Did he assume he was already through? I have my concerns. Purely the fact he's got the two Dutch lads to go, and you know if they're flying, Nick Kenny could be a big story that way. Yeah, Kenny beaten heavily in both of his first two matches, 4-1 by Kai Van Lung, and just before the break there, 4-1 by Rob Collins. Who remember lost all of his matches yesterday, but as Glenn just mentioned, both of uh, Kenny's averages in the 70s. Remember at this point yesterday evening, he just averaged 105 in one match. I can understand why you're concerned. Will he be concerned? And that's the question. If we look at the league table, he's the one now really looking over his shoulder. He's definitely concerned because I've just walked through the uh, players, players' lounge there and, you know, Kai and Rob there yesterday, they look pretty forlorn. You know, they're the guys who were bouncing around tonight and it's Nick who just sort of flopped on his seat there. He's, he's thinking about it now. He's got the talent. He can do this if he doesn't panic. Big game against Richard Veenstra coming up for him. Yeah, absolutely. Big game next as well. Kai Fan Long himself back in action, taking on Chris Landman. Uh, when the pair met yesterday, this is what happened. Uh, Lung did take out a nice 80 finish to lead the match 3-2 but it was Landman that went on to get the victory 4-3. And if he does that tonight, Glenn, he will be the first man through. But the way that the evening's going, nothing certain, is it? It's a clash of styles. That's the concern I have for Chris Landman at this point because obviously, you know, Kai is more, uh, a little bit slower than the other players. Is it going to affect his rhythm? Um, so it's probably mind over matter for Landman more than anything. But yeah, all to play for. It's exciting. Didn't think I'd be saying that after game five tonight. Yeah, the script really has been ripped up. Let's see how it unravels then. Glenn will rejoin Matthew Edgar to talk you through the final five matches. Thank you, Chris. I believe before I've used the term banana bomb for the group table, which is a, an old weapon on an old computer game, worms. And I think that's what's happened tonight. The group has been banana bombed where everything's been ripped apart and different numbers have gone in different places and what we thought was going to happen hasn't happened and what we didn't think would happen has happened it's okay, first a bit of it's everything to Glenn throw first. Just quite well Game upstairs on. on the balcony a clash of styles i really like that one Kai a little bit more deliberate the guy who's throwing on your screen right now been in a good bit of form recently 54 he didn't bring that form here until Match number three this evening when he took a 4-1 victory over Nick Kenny. Six. Chris Landman has been here since Monday. He took part in Group A. Looked like he was going to win that group at one point. Then promoted into Group B off the back of that one. 100. And came into this group with Richard Veenstra. Two really quick players who treat us to that game in game 100. four, 100. When Chris Landman took that with a 1 4 5 finish for the match. Well, as far as the league table goes, this is still must win territory for Fat Beauty. 140. And then he introduces me, as he says, Fat Beauty. He's good, isn't he? I haven't introduced you yet. I was going to take the, the beauty bit off. <laughs> Don't laugh at your own jokes. 16. Clash of, clash of styles, clash of personalities, clash of everything here. Um, but I did not think after game five we'll be talking how exciting this group's going to be. We had real concerns that after game three tonight it was all done and dusted. And we had seven dead rubbers. Sixty. The total opposite there. Let, let me say, Nick Kenny sat there. He doesn't look as happy and jovial and bouncing around like he was yesterday. He's definitely thinking about it. The only good thing about uh, Nick is that he's on next again. The bad 59. thing is he's playing Richard Veenstra, who also needs the win. That will be a barnstormer. He needed a treble. So, advantage landman. 90. Because you're going 12. 
game there on the, the first first leg. Chris Landman. He's been that prolific in. He's been brilliant on the on the double top all week. Double ten he's really struggled with. Second leg is Chris. The rubber, that non-throwing arm. I will get to the bottom of why he does that. He'll probably just say because I was called. 100. Yeah, I do like double six. I find it's a very, very good double for a right-handed dart player. It's just, all you've got to do is get the height right. I thought you would like double one, actually. That's usually what you end up on. 39. Do you have a favourite double? or was Double it just one lately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one just before you get there. Don't laugh at your own jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was joking. Forty-five. In trouble. Let his throw broken. He's open thirty-nine forty-five. And one thing we know about Landman is he's very persistent. Persistent on the attack. And he very rarely goes through spells of trebleless visits, like we've seen from someone like Nick Kenny tonight, and like Kai fans got the habit of doing, where he'll go four or five visits without a treble. I tend to find that Landman. He will have troubleless visits, but he won't connect 60. them together. He normally breaks them up. And he'll never go down on 19s or move across to the 18s as well. They weren't good darts. I think he's uh, maybe feeling the cold a little bit there. He's had a shiver, but he'd be delighted with the outcome so far. 141. 141. Now it's just about setting it up, keeping it simple. Leaves 106. So I would like to see at that point and see going the treble 19 is a big open bed there. For Kai Van Lung, something's got to happen right now. Does look a lot happier. Uh, we had both Rob Collins and Kai Fan coughing and spluttering yesterday. Kai definitely feels a lot better, he said. And that's been dictated. Forty-eight. Some much better darts. Which require eighty-six. I just left a bogey there, Matt. Yeah, he didn't work that out well. He took his time as well, trying to work it out. And game yeah, shot. So this is hard leg. to work out. It's Chris Landman. Game shot. Two nil. Chris Landman. You've seen Chris Landman now for five days, up close and personal. You've said he's. In like fact, he's tried I to might even know the answer because. You have sort of mentioned him as a potential winner tomorrow night, but what's your thoughts been from the moment he threw his first dart on Monday morning? 140. Good player. Needs right. to work on the board mastery style of things a little bit. I would just 60. like to look at his practice routines and just make sure that there's enough purpose in there and that there's enough of a challenge. Certainly when we're looking at moving around the board. Is he just throwing at targets? Or is he throwing with emotion? And I'd just make sure that it's the latter because I've just got 100. my doubts when he's moving around. Well, we're trying to chat winners for tomorrow. And already we have mentioned the five out of five already between us. We keep changing every half hour. It's one not to be missed tomorrow night. Five grand to the winner, but even better. Oh, you what we would love is right behind you there. It's open on a Saturday night for the public. And the tickets are free at dartshop.tv. I might even stick my head out and give you a big 46. hello. Be great to see our last one of 2020. What a massive success the Motor Super Series has been. And just listening to the players there, you get the chance to chat with them and 60. they're loving the opportunity. Oh, the partnership between the ADC and the Motor Super Series, the partnership with the World Seniors and the Motor Super Series. It's all very good moving 59. into 2023. I'm delighted to be involved. Just hopefully I'll get a different commentator next time. And I'll 140. be a happy man. Can we require 20? Double ten, Matt. You feel this has to go. I'm feeling the desperation here for Kai Fang. I mean, he did open this leg with back-to-back one forties. No score. That, I don't know how he's come inside he's that. And that's not going in. That is harsh, with a capital H, and it could be about to be a capital A as well. If Chris one. Landman, Kai required twenty. That's the chance, but 
chances coming and going. I said earlier it was a game of chance tennis. Game shot on the third leg. Kai Fan Lung. That's an ace from Kai Fan Lung when he just needed it. Well, it's Chris well, Lamb and serve now. First. Sixty. This is game number six. Ten games to come your hey, way. T1. You have recently joined us because she was watching the PDC World Championships. Quick fill in to mark your card, One which had been four two against Kai Fang Lung, who's on your stage right now. Rob Collins beat Landman, who's on your stage right now. Kai Fang Lung then beat Nick Kenny four one. Landman bounced back four three victory over Richard Beans with a one four five finish for the match. And then Rob Collins just beat Nick Kenny. So the story of the night right now is Rob Collins could be the evening's 100. undertaker because he lost all four games last night. And so far, he is on course to win all four and potentially qualify, which means we might be going over to Twitter and popping ourselves a little gif on there of the undertaker hey, sitting up in the middle of the ring. Yeah, we're already looking at stages of getting outcomes now. Simple fact here, if Chris Landon wins this game, 100. we'll be seeing him again tomorrow night. It does, get into feel, does feel like we're getting to the stage where the abacus will be out. Fingers and toes. The ten toes of mine and the nine of Matt's. 60. Chris, you've 141. 11. Forty-six. Just the first sign of a slip there for Lamman, who'd be disappointed with that last dart. It looks like Kai Fan's going to jump all over this. Eighty. That's harsh. It is. Chris, you're going yeah, ninety-five. That moves him from a one treble finish to a two, and that moves Chris Landman as Speak. now big favourite to be able to. Get this one wrapped Going up. That slip the into the two actually Chris worked out Landman. quite well because he's been trying to leave that double 18 all week. He leaves it again there, moves himself so just one to leg away first. from the match and Kai Fan's hopes of qualifying have just got extremely slim. He needs to start firing and it has to start. 140. Yeah, the whole trajectory of that, them darts are good. You've got that beautiful camera angle going. And you could see the stands from behind. Of Kain just saw the way the dart went in. It was two of his better darts tonight. And this is the Kai Fan Lung we expected to see last night. We did a little bit of research, of course, getting ready for these players. One hundred has been playing fantastic. And not necessarily all in 2022. We're talking very recent. Last week in Holland... Got to the semi-final of the World Masters. Have you ever won the World Masters, Matt? One and in the World Open, he reached the final. So he came here, and hence the reason why I nominated him for getting through this group. But he was pretty poor last night. It could be down to the fact he wasn't feeling great. But he's had opportunities tonight as well. Forty-one. This is league's had ups and downs tonight that none of us really expected. Well, what is a, a big thing right now is that Chris Landman is getting to the finishing line here. 60. You feel the frustration there because they were well-thrown darts. 69. Oh, I think that's got the flight, that 79. one, from Kai Fang. And Which that could be an expensive slip-up. Might utilise the ball. Hey, the trouble there. Okay. We talk about his board management there, and I think that's a classic example. The bull was the shot there. One one six. So many players now using the nineteen's route with a conclusion that being a dart at tops. Eighty six. So for the match, which requires seventy eight and a place in the final. Twenty. Fifty eight. I think it was a miscount 30. from Kai. I think he was trying to leave tops. You could see 
the disappointment when he heard the call of 86. Game's on the but double fifteen. Kai Fang Not Lung. a problem for Kai Fang Lung. In he goes. One dart. Thank you very much. 16 dart leg. And when we said it needs to be now, it was. See if it gets Chris to throw first. You feel that he's probably going to have to be 15 or less here. Because I Six don't think he can allow Chris Landman 18 darts. This is a tidy start to that procedure. 100. Well, the trebles are drying up for Landman. He needs one of his big 140 scores. 100. That feels nice, that last dart. And once again... And two darts sat below the treble. For most players, it would go down to the 19s. He just seems to lift his elbow just up a touch and float it over there. And we've seen that now 60. for all week. Very consistent. Doesn't often deviate into the one or the five. 140. Brilliant return there. Advantage landman. Oh, big advantage. Because... We said Kaifan's got to be 15 or less because if he's not giving Landman that 18 dart potential, hey, he's not going to get that 15 or less from here unless he gets a very big visit. So you could say that Landman is going to get nine darts here at the 201, which he'd be very disappointed with if he could not convert that. So Chris Landman could be about to book himself in the next 30 seconds or so a place in tomorrow night's final, joining Alex Small, 59. Leonard Gates, and Adam Warner. Which we're going 96. Going to finish his hit a few times this week. Sweet as a nut. Game he shot does exactly match. that, and he shouts Chris out with Landman. delight. A highly commendable performance there from Chris Landman. He knows the outcome of that. Look at that fist pump. Something very rarely seen from the man. He'll be absolutely over the moon with that. And we'll see you on Saturday night, Chris Landman. And his compatriot, Richard Veenstra, follow that. Big game coming up. Veenstra, Kenny.
So we now have four finalists in the field for Saturday night. Two spots remain available and one of them could be filled in the next match. Chris Landman, the latest to add his name to Saturday's session. That after victory against Kai Fan Lung in the previous game, a 4-2 success for Landman. Uh, a golfing class really in performance as they're 11 points better off in the average, just four out of nine on the doubles, a 96 checkout in there as well for the Dutchman who moves on to 10 points in the Group B table and that is enough to see him through with a game to spare and his Dutch compatriot Richard Veenstra can do exactly the same thing if he gets a better of third place Nick Kenny in the next game. A win for Kenny incidentally would eliminate Kai Fan Lung from contention so something will be sealed at the end of this one. Nick Kenny has lost his first couple of games this evening and he's up against Veenstra now. Now when the pair met yesterday it was the only defeat of the night for Nick Kenny but it was an emphatic one. Uh, a 93 sealed on double seven for Richard Veenstra for a 4-0 whitewash win. So maybe the last person that Nick Kenny wants to face right now, or maybe the ideal person with a, a score to settle. Let's see which Kenny it brings out in the company of Glenn Durant and Matthew Edgar. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I'm not really sure how that man feels. He's smiling away there. And like you rightly said, maybe Richard Veenstra is the type of player he wants to play because there's been no histrionics. He'll just get on with the job and you know, if you can beat what's in front of you, that might be just what he needs because it won't affect Nick's rhythm. But Nick, he came in tonight and we pretty much thought Nick, Chris Lambman and Veenstra that by this time will be announced that them three will be in the finals, but it's been far from that. If Richard wins this game, okay, first, quite simply, to throw he goes through. Game on. If Nick Kenny goes, wins this game, Kai Fan Lung is out. And we'll keep you updated as the night goes on. Just sit back and enjoy. It's good Sixth how it's panned out, isn't it? We, we did have worries coming down here. We were speaking about it earlier on this afternoon when we was in between the sessions and we were saying how Tonight has the potential 25. to just be over within those first couple of games. And the way it's worked out, the way it's panned out, I think it's gone beyond anyone's expectations. Yeah, I thought it was just going to fizzle out. It's been far from that. Actually been a good evening, but not for that guy so far. This is a guy who averaged 105.47, 85.55, 89.56, 85.56, 85.56 and 88.41. A standout performer last night. But how many times do we see that in the Moda Super Series? The player of the day one day. 96. There's a bag of spanners the next day. They'll be feeling pretty rubbish right now. I think the biggest example 58. I saw of that was I was once on a week. And James Richardson was here. And he went five from five. He had a 115 average. Then he lost five from five. One hundred and thirty. He won five from five again. The sandwich of the ridiculous. Forty-one. Keeping my eye on Nick there, and he's beginning to grit that teeth. And this is what I like from him. This is good. This is better, Nick. Travel eighteen. One hundred. So much better now because. Just began to find that aggression, which I think's been missing tonight. Just keep your eye on him. Aye, the mannerisms of dar players, the video and syncrasies of dar players. This guy needs to have adrenaline rushing through his body. Game this shot on the is first much, leg. much better. Nick At last, Kenny. real Nick Kenny. Please stand up. So he gets Richard to throw first. Game on. Problem when you're playing Richard Veenstra. You feel like you've got him. 76. And in seconds, you can suddenly find your 2 1 down. So, right now, just about focus. Keeping it simple. This is exactly what he's doing. Just keep your eye on him there. 140. You ever wonder what it's like to be a dar player? That grimace at the end was just because he's beginning to feel good and he's disappointed that that wasn't a 180. 58. 
But Richard, there's a lot in this game. He knows if he wins this game, he goes through. I expected a bit more from him. Leaves his well, follow through arm there. That's always a sign for me that someone's feeling good and confident. And Never write off this man because the beauty of him is he can be asleep and then all of a sudden he'll wake up and bang. It's 180 after 140. I quite like treble 17 at that point, but he feels there's a treble 20 in him. He was right. He knows his game better than I do. And there's that grimace again. I'm liking this performance from Nick. 85. Nick, you've got 161. And with Richard on 182. Doesn't need to do anything silly. A treble would be nice. They might use the bull here. 58. No, the reason I would have brought the bull into it there is it would have left 97. And that would have left in an obvious two dart combination, but no punishment. 58. You're going to 103. That's advantage, Kenny. The treble 20 or treble 16. That leaves double 18. Game on the second. Big leg. finish from Nick Kenny. Nick Kenny. So much better. He's finally waking up tonight. And it's 2 0 to Nick Kenny. Richard Veenstra. So I think it's Nick to throw first. We had the opportunity Game to on. qualify on Saturday night. And this is probably the worst I've seen Richard play all week. And Dart is all about timing. The timing for him right now is a shocker. 100. 60. Kenny at the World Masters last week, he beat Richard in the last 32, and he said when he beat Richard, he felt he was going to go on and win it from there. It wasn't to beat. 60. One hundred and forty. Just when you begin to doubt Veenstra. I've done it so many times this week and he's pulled out some monster finishes. Some big scores and just a flash of brilliance. That can last a couple of legs, so I'll be very wary of that. That's a big advantage to Kenny at the moment. Fifty nine. Just trying to find because we spoke quite a bit about Richard Veenstra in one hundred and eighty. Find that he attended. He was definitely there. Ninety six. Richard, you're one hundred and twenty one. And the fact that Nick Kenny wasn't on a treble, that treble twenty is lovely. I was going to leave a eighty nine. I'll leave a double 16. Nick Kenny, all he can do is put some pressure on. The only concern for Nick here, it will be a break of throw. And you just 16. can't give these opportunities. Richard Vinsel is very quiet in this match. Well, you said it yourself earlier on in the game. You said leg. just when you think you've Richard got on top Vainstra. of Richard Vinsel, he comes back at you. That's exactly what's happened here. Just when you start to think... Nick Kenny's getting in this game. Nick Kenny's starting to well, take over. Richard to throw Nick first. Kenny's going to move towards the finishing line. Richard Veenstra pops in a 13 data. Six. Gets his throw back, and we're back to square one again. But this is an improved performance from Nick Kenny. He has been hanging out in the mid-70s today, which is not Nick Kenny-esque. He has raised it into the mid 80s. We will still be thinking you can put another five to eight points on that. Who would have thought that Rob Collins would be sat there thinking, I can do this? He was not at the races. If he'd have been a racehorse, possibly pulled him up last no, night because he wasn't not. feeling great. Didn't win a match. Pretty much unseated rider. 81. 
Mike has got the legs on the board, and that treble 20 brings him back into this leg. Another one would be nice. 140. One it is. Doing those sparkling 180s. That's not ideal. 140. Oh, got that last one in. I will never know. Two or seven. Two treble visit. Look at 19s. Wonderful set up from Nick Kenny. This is so much better from him. Averaging over 90. Richard Finch just popped that 120 in a couple of times 70. this week. These are the types of finishes. 70. Big, big moment, this. And he knows exactly the situation. And he's looking at treble 18. Or even treble 14. Double 18. Game what show a moment for Nick play. Kenny. Nick we doubted Kenny. him. We actually thought it was beginning to run away from him. And I really didn't fancy his chances against really Richard Venture as he got on the hockey. First. But he has Game so much self-confidence, so much belief. He probably wasn't panicking like I was. And if it does go the distance, Richard's going to have to break him twice. Massive advantage. Nick Kenny. There was two things that Nick Kenny did there. One that was great, one that's funny. 45. The bit that was great was he wasn't rushed. He knew the size of that moment. He made sure that the big numbers was in. I mean, that attempt on the big numbers was back in the middle. There was no risk taking. There was no rush. Made sure of it. Made sure he got his dart the double. But then he didn't even realize it was his throw. He was trying to walk behind Richard Beenstra at the back of the stage. Probably 45. thinking, move off a bit, pal. I need a bit of room here. Ended up having the advantage of throw, and it's caught him off guard a little bit, I think, here. He's open 45-45, and once again, like Glenn Durant said, just when you think that you've got Richard Veenstra beat, he comes back at 42. you. 140-134. As Nick Kenny, once again, has one of these runs of treblous visits, that is nine darts Aye, and counting. Richard's looking very handy in the positive Nine, leg stage. Three. Richard, you've got 146. But this would put Nick on eight points with him. Rob Collins then becomes the big danger. So all to play for right now. 94. And what I would say to Richard is every leg counts. Eighty-five. You feel this one's going to be counting in the Richard Veenstra column. He's going to get Game five darts at the double. He play. doesn't need five darts. Richard he needs one. Because he's two from two on the doubles in this one. And we've said that quite a lot this week. He's been very good on the outer ring. He's probably See, been the star Richard performer when it comes to Game the big on. checkouts. The finishes over a hundred. He's got a lot of numbers in that column. One hundred. Kenny is going to hope that he doesn't hear big numbers called unless he's stood at the hockey. Interesting final game of the night. I did not think it would go all the way there, but it's Richard Venture against Rob Collins. How interesting is that going to be? 96. It could be very interesting. I think Nick Kenny might be also watching the screen at times tonight because I sort of feel that time is running out here. I sort of feel Richard Veenstra has just took the shackles off and he's just sprinting towards the line and Nick Kenny's got to find a way to stop him. Despite the fact, if you look at the scoreboard, Nick Kenny hey, should be in control. Because he's the guy in front. But if you had to sort of judge this in terms of a, a momentum, you'd be going with Veenstra. 60. The only positive for Nick Kenny right now, he does have the darts last leg. We did say that it, Richard would have to, have to break him twice. The frustrations there is going low again. He doesn't look tight. He doesn't look... 96. Like he's full of tension. Actually looks quite relaxed. Sometimes your brain can take over. And he's probably thinking, I want to get to eight points. 60. 
And I want to get there now. And that's when you tighten up. When you do tighten up, you start going low. 100. Can you like those dark tops and 18s? Or do we lose them free? 140. Just ask Nick Kenny the question. A 1 2 4 for the match. If not, it is likely to be going all the way. Treble 18. So that offers Veenstra the opportunity to Fifth level us eight. up. Richard, you require 20. It's like Glenn said, when you think you've got him beat. No oh. score. Oh, maybe he has got him beat this time. 66 for Nick Kenny, because that slipped inside the double 15. Nick, you require Should 66. Get a match dart. He's growling and snarling. A prime John Part. Thirty-four. Knows that. Richard, you required twenty. Was that his chance? I don't anticipate Richard missing this. Game shown the sick flag. Richard Vainstrom. This game's had a bit of everything, really. But if you're Seven from final leg, it's you're walking to onto that stage, on. you're going to be 3-3 three, three with your darts. Nick probably would have took that. The fact he had that 3-1 lead, and that's a lovely feel. I can't tell you how great it is when that first one goes in, but it has to be backed up. 140. Sixty. Oh, and here's your opportunity, Nick Kenny. A trebleless visit, a rare trebleless visit there from Richard Vainstra. 96. Nick Kenny finds a valuable 60. treble 19. And just when we're saying Richard Vainstra is not one of the sort of players that goes on these trebleless runs. He does it at the most crucial time and really hands Nick Kenny a big opportunity that he has taken with both hands. 98. Yeah, all darts have been well thrown by Richard, but they're just not finding the treble till, the, till that one. But really, 95. Not enough. Nick, you've got 167. Nick Kenny's got at least six darts. The 167. He won't even be considering the bull at this point because that's a beautiful treble 17. 97. I feel like that's job done, but non Richard. He'll come back with some score to make you think. 60. Not this Nick time. 70. Nick Kenny's now looking good. There's the growl. There's the fat 20. And double 16. 54. Not to panic. He will be back. Sixty-one. Nicky requires sixteen. And once again, he's still got six darts at this double eight. We move across the hockey. Shake of the head. The frustration. No score. I think the frustration continues. The only positive is. That's 61 from Richard Vinstra. Left a bogey. And he's not putting any pressure oh, on this. Two. Nick Kenny, Nick this is your chance. 16. You don't get these chances against Richard Vinstra. No score. Wowzer. Richard, you require 123. Is this typical of the game of darts we love, Treble 18? 55. Nick Kenny, you've had 24 darts. Nick requires 16. Dart 22 coming now. Double eight. I don't believe it. Eight. Incredible. Just when Richard you think you've seen everything 68. tonight. Nick 
We wrote our own story at six o'clock tonight. It's double four. Game Richard Veenstra. We'll see you on Saturday Richard night. Veenstra. Nick Kenny. That is a tough, tough one to take. Unbelievable scenes here. Nick Kenny having an absolute disastrous night. And it's not going to get any easier for him. But Richard Veenstra, he moves along his compatriot. It's a Dutch duo we'll see on Saturday night. Next up, Kai Fang Lung. Rob Collins. Starting drama before the break, wasn't it? Richard Veenstra is through, though, confirmed at finals night, along with fellow Dutchman Chris Landman. That, after beating Nick Kenny in a tense tungsten tussle in which he won 4-3, but only after Nick Kenny had missed nine match darts. In fact, it was equivalent to 11 because he bust in one dart in one of his visits there. So Nick Kenny really under pressure now, the Welshman whose averages have all been in the 70s tonight. Remember, he had 105 in one of his games last night, but he's lost all three so far this evening. Confirmation then that the top two are through, Richard Veinstra and Chris Landman. Kenny, though, nervously looking over his shoulder because he's about to be joined on six points by either Rob Collins or Kai Fan Lung, who are just practicing behind me right now. Twice tonight, Rob Collins has stepped up, needing to win to keep his hopes alive. And that's what he's done twice tonight, having lost all his games last night, including against Kai Fan Lung, who took out this 80 checkout during the game. A game that he actually ended up trailing. Oh, sorry, busting 80 in the game. My mistake, my notes are 
not accurate on that occasion. But he ended up trailing the game and turning it around to win 4-3. It was the second time Collins has got to three, but then not to four first in the first couple of matches. And uh, Kai Fan Lung took full advantage. Now, both players still in with a chance, but for Kai Fan Lung, it is the last chance. It's the last time we'll see him this evening. And if he does win, he will still need other results to go his way. As for Collins, if he wins here, he could actually find himself ahead of Nick Kenny, depending on the margin of victory. So let's end the talking and start the throwing. Uh, all the talking will come from the commentators anyway, Glenn Durant and Matthew Edgar. Yes, one of us, thank you, Chris. One of us will be talking sense. You will be talking out the backside. This is getting beyond a joke back in here. Who would have thought Rob Collins would be in this situation right now? I, for one, wouldn't. I, for one, didn't. But he's right in the mix. And quite simply here, a big win against Kai. Not only does he go on to six points, but he overtakes Nick Kenny. And Nick Kenny has a tough match against Chris Landman. Albeit Rob Collins having Richard Veenstra. It's very exciting and very interesting Take time. It's Rob to throw first. Very game on. Unpredictable night. And who would have thought it'd be coming to game eight? And we still haven't got a clue who the third player will be. We are interacting with you all evening on social media. You can get in contact with us at MSS Starts, at Does a 180, and at the Edgar 501. We've got a lovely message coming in here from Tracy Mill. I'm sorry if I've murdered your name. She said that she's really enjoying the commentary. You've got to love it. Uh, the commentary and the friendship between the Edgar and the Dozer. Such a great partnership between the two. You two are absolutely Nine brilliant. Six. Not so funny and not scared to get the predictions wrong. Well done, Glenn, on that one. Um, says that her two-year-old loves us. So that is where you're pitching your comedy, Glenn. So I'm very happy with my comedy. There's a couple of things I'm not very happy with with you, which I will be addressing. This is a small comms hey, box. G5. Number one, it's smelling of kebab and chips. The hint of bubble and big squeak. That's a good start here from Kai Fan Lung. He could do his friend Nick Kenny a, a big favour with a win here. 60. I remember an Olympic 800 metre race. I think it was late 70s and a guy started slowly and finished like an absolute train, an American to win the 57. gold. 57. Just feels a little bit like Rob Collins. He just didn't come out the blocks. He wasn't feeling good. And right now, he has big opportunities to be sat in third place. 36. But not Guy with darts like that. 38. When we was walking back to the accommodation last night, we was having a bit of a chat. We were saying how Rob Collins 41. really was hard done by in terms of the amount of points he got, which was zero compared to the level of performance that he played. He deserved a little bit yesterday. He's certainly getting more of what he deserves today. And he's certainly giving himself an opportunity. Point one, 97. But you've got to make the most of that opportunity. When you're up against Kai Fang, an ex-PDC tour card holder, you can't be looking at 21, 24 darts with the throw. But just when we start to write our own stories, that Rob Collins is going to go all the way. Really hit the skids here. 40. Wire. Double 10. 30. That's the 21 Robbie darts. We're not the wiser who's going to win this leg because out of nowhere. 76. Could go double double. He'll have a little think. He moves across the hockey. All he can do now is set it up. 60. Can you require 10? Game shot on the first leg. Kai Fan Luke. And a huge sigh of relief backstage by Nick Kenny there as Kai hits that one. Second leg is Kai to throw first. A pair of them were coughing and spluttering in the opening game of last night. 
course, feeling fine today. 100. I have no idea how this group ends. I think you're pretty much the same. You're not too sure. But luckily, Jack has got in contact with us on 25. Twitter. 25. And he thinks he knows the answer. He thinks that Rob Collins is going to overtake Nick Kenny. Thanks for that opinion, Jack. Keep them coming in, guys. We do have it open in front of us. We love the interaction. We've also had a, a message from a certain Chris Murphy. Who 134. Says that we've actually been good in comms and we've actually kept him well entertained. He wouldn't be saying that if he was sat in here. 180! It's a wonderful three darts from Kai Fan Lung. Like I said, Nick Kenny is the one who's celebrating most at the moment. 96. Well, two sharpies up my nose. Hey, T3. I you might have mentioned Eggheads, by the way. No, I don't watch it. I beat the most cleverest man in Britain. I was surprised I got on, actually. I was surprised because they said, right, Glenn, tell me oh, something you're not 81. very good at, beginning with N. And I went spelling. <laughs> 49. Robbie Reguire, 152. I saw the potential. Rob Collins could do with a moment right now. It's all gone a little bit pear-shaped. 44. Okay. Now he requires Three 32. Three darts at 32 and looking good. 92. No score. What Robbie else is this group going to do to us, Matt? Well, Jack thinks he knows the answer. He thinks Rob Collins is going through. If that is the case... He needs to start taking shots like this. 68. Bent the wire. Kaya requires 32. Bent the wire. Game shot on the second leg. Kai Fan look. Problems for the Jack prediction there as Kai Fan confirms the break of throw. We've had another message come in through Twitter. This one's an interesting one. You'll like this one as well, first. actually. This one's from Nigel Hayden, local to me. Warwickshire player, The Undertaker. We've seen him in the World Championships on both codes. Seen him in the Lakeside, Six, the yeah, Palace. Really good player. I'm surprised we've not seen him down here yet, actually, at the Super Series. Maybe that's one that's gone slightly under the radar and maybe needs to be looked at. But he 100. said that the comment that you made about the kebab and chips reminded him about the Prakash story, oh, one of it. your favourite... Actually, a smile went on my face there because of all the darts and hey, stories I've heard, that was definitely my favourite. I'll share that with you very, very quickly. Prakash, like Glenn, is quite a tight man and was going out for an all-you-can-eat and he didn't want to spend the money to do so, so he ordered a kebab in and we went out as normal, as planned, and when we got to the car, I was like, we're not having this. So we rang up the Ooh, kebab shop and said, sorry, the guy who's just ordered, Mr. Jiwa, it's his 40th birthday. We're going out for a dinner together. Please cancel that. It's a surprise birthday party. No problem. So it was playing the waiting game. How long it took him before he rang the kebab shop to check where his order was until he actually realized it was. We went out. We had the meal. We came back. We were sat in the reception playing poker when his kebab came in three hours later. <laughs> Game shot the wow, third I didn't leg. think he would go. I was looking Kai at the setup Luke. play there from Kai. That's a wonderful 1 2 6 finish then. Took us all by surprise because with Rob Collins not on a finish, like it's Kai, to throw Kai knows right now he Game can't off. qualify for Saturday night and the shackles are off and he's just letting these darts fly right now. And it's a surprise. Inverted commas, a 3 0 lead here for Kai. And like I said, a big winner here. And not necessarily Kai, but Nick Kenny. Was that a bit of a disastrous night? One hundred and forty. With the situation. Well, I've 55. got to say, Jack on Twitter 
I kind of was with you from what we've seen of Rob Collins yesterday at the back end and for how he's played today, the aggression he's brought into his game. I was with you. I thought Rob Collins could potentially crash the party of the top three. But right now... Do you want to hear your my kebab story? Yes. Bridlington, absolutely leathered, which I was only once a year I would have a drink at a dark competition, and it was always Bridlington. I went to the B&B, went to get the dart out of my pocket with a kebab in my hand, had to put the kebab on the floor, took my no, key out, opened the want... door, left the kebab outside, was then having a fight with myself, thinking I thought I'd gone for a kebab, I thought I had one, fell asleep, fuming next morning. When the landlady came over and said, who left this kebab on the landing? 136. Prakash Jiwa in the Worlds this year. The Indian qualifier. He'd be well chuffed with that, won't he? Yes, it'll be a dream come through. Four, true three, four, there for Prakash Jiwa. Going, He'd be taking on Madar's Razma, but this one might not have long left. Just 86 points for Kai Fang. Going to be a dart at the ball. That's all it is. When it Kai all Fan over for Lord. Kai Fang, we then started to see the real Kai Fang. The Kai Fang that got to the World Masters semi final, the runner up of the World Open. These events just happened last week in Asan. 4 0 victory there for Kai Fang, and that is music to the ears of Nick Kenny. This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
Yeah, free to watch as well, free to attend if you can make it Saturday night. Tickets available absolutely free via dartshop.tv. And we are just one more player away from filling the field for finals night. A uh, quick reflection on that previous match, and it has made it very likely that that player will be Nick Kenny. Kai Van Long defeating Rob Collins 4-0. Collins, who lost all his matches yesterday, won his first two tonight, but then comes back down to earth with a bump, the Man of Steel beaten 4-0 by Kai Fan Lung. The league table then looks like this. Now we're trying to work out the situation between Kai Fan Lung and Nick Kenny because a 4-0 defeat here would see them on the same leg difference. So uh, we'll get back to you on the legs one situation. That's what it goes to next. But by my quick math, if Nick Kenny does win a couple of legs in this game, then that would be enough to see him through because he'd be too far ahead of both Kai Fan Lung and Rob Collins uh, on leg difference. Of course, he wins the match. It's definitely done uh, because they can't catch him on points. But he takes on Chris Landman, who we have seen already qualify for finals night. And when the pair met yesterday, well, Nick Kenny enjoyed a whitewash win. An excellent opening display for him to kick off yesterday's action. Trying to bounce back from some struggles this evening. Felt he should have got it done in his previous match, but missed nine darts to do so. So a chance for Kenny to put it right. As I say, just a couple of legs away from qualification in the penultimate match of the night. It's Kenny against Landman, and it is back to uh, our boys in the commentary box. I hope you've got your calculator, Matt, and your abacus, Glenn. We're looking right now at, did I write off Kai Van Lung too early? Uh, we're looking at all the scores here. Uh, Nick Kenny's on minus one so even a four three would take him to minus two meaning if rob collins won four nil he too would go to minus two yeah various permutations going on here i think the only thing nick kenny can do is just win the game okay first leg it's chris to throw first game on well, the one thing he does soon if nick kenny wins one leg one thing we can confirm is kai fang is out Nick Kenny wins one leg. One hundred. So that's the first thing that we can rule out. When we'll, we'll tick him off as we go. Yeah. I think that'll be the easiest thing. So we're looking at Kenny for one leg. We do have the possibility here that Nick Nine Kenny could come six. into today, lose all four of his matches, and still qualify. I've not seen that before. One hundred and twenty-one. But you wish there was a system like that this year, don't you? I was just about to crack the same about you, but about your career. 90. I was just trying to get the words right there. One hundred and forty. I think when I won the Premier League, I'm sure I said to someone, I don't care if I never win another game again. How wrong I was. 99. Great, you've got 140. Yeah, people ask about me the worst moment of my trials and 100. tribulations. I remember losing... 6 7 nil to uh, Dimitri in COVID Premier League time. Ushered back to my hotel room. And I laid there. 90. In the dark in a tyre. Looking up to the ceiling in the dark room. Tops for Chris Landman. Game show on the Pings first. it right eh? in the corner there. Chris this is Landman. very, very interesting. So I was sat in my hotel room, just looking up in a dark room, thinking, oh, my God, tomorrow night I've got Michael Van so Gerwen. Nick to throw the night first. after that, I've got Gerwin Price and finished the week against Peter Wright. Needless to say, I didn't sleep very well that week. 55. Well, when you're in need of legs, when it's still in your hands, the last thing you want to do is have your opponent... It's in a hundred average against you. That's what Landman's done. He's come out firing 60. here. Nick Kenny starts another leg off with a lack of trebles. 60. Been the theme of his night. It's been the story. Nick Kenny, That stat is through the roof. Yes, I'm going to work on my punditry, that's for sure, because I got it badly, won. badly wrong. Never in a million years did I think I'd be sat here right now with Nick Kenny on played three, one none, and one nil down in this one. And 
140. Like you said there, the first thing he needs to do is get rid of Kai. And he simply does that by winning one leg of darts here. 100. We spoke 146. a lot about the qualification because that is... Oh, Nick Kenny. Oh, he's on the 146 finish. Surprised. He sat, he stayed there with him on 200. No, I think that was a nice marker. I, I would have probably stayed there as well, to be fair. I think it sat well, the angle of the entry. 16. And You're look at the 52. hunger of Nick Kenny. Straight to the board. 52. So he likes a bit Game of grip between his teeth. Left. And there That's it is. Bye, Nick bye, Kenny. Kai. Kai Fang Lang is out. And like I so said, we are focusing on the the qualification. But we know that so look, a lot Chris of people three that watch first. this like to have a little flutter. And you guys might be on your group winners. 60. Betting, which both Veenstra and Landman are on 10 points. They are the only two players left that can win this group. If Landman wins this game, he puts it over to Richard Veenstra. Richard Veenstra Binch has a big, healthy difference in the legs column. He has six legs. So realistically, Landman is probably... Only hope of overtaking Veenstra is Veenstra losing to Rob Collins in the last match. And the fact it's the debut, I don't think they'll be wondering, well, if I win this game, I'll play so and so tomorrow night. And let's be honest with you, the six players that qualify tomorrow night, there's no easy group, a hard group, there's no standout player. 60. It's going to, I can't wait for tomorrow night. And that's as genuine as I say. When you sit here all week, that Monday, you think Saturday's a long way and you. You're watching 104 legs of darts, 104 matches, sorry. And, you, and you, then it comes to this conclusion there, and we are no further One closer to picking a winner. That's a wonderful 180 from Landman. Will it be followed? One Don't forget, tomorrow we'll also be bringing out Edgar's naughty Christmas shirt. Yes, we're sharing the balcony tomorrow, aren't we? Sixty-eight. Think you were going hundred and fifty. That was a, a double sixteen. Uh, double eight. Sorry. Yeah, he went treble fifteen rather than the twenty-five. I like that play, especially with Nick Kenny back on one fifty. I'd have probably done exactly the same. So I'm with you there, eight. Chris Landman. He's now got three darts to put himself back in front. Mm. Game show. Fully expected birthday. the double two to go Chris there. Chris Landman. It's been one. Is. Uh, had an excellent ratio of hitting that, both him and Richard. Cool. Well, I don't Nick think Nick Kenny will know exactly what the scenario is. But there's a strong possibility, as Matt alluded to. I don't think it'll be a case of played for, lost for. 140. But I can't see Rob beating Richard Veenstra 4-0. You, you mentioned there, he says... One I don't know how aware Nick Kenny's going to be of the situation. We're not aware of the situation. And we're sat here with loads of screens in front of us with numbers and data and scores in front of us, and we still can't work out what is going on. Four, so the best five. thing Nick Kenny can do is just win because the only, like I said, the only time a league table really comes into play is when you're losing. The only time he needs to worry about ever all the possibilities is if he loses. If he wins, he forget all about all the ifs, the buts, the legs, and everything that needs to come with that. Were you commentating 60. the night of the nine dart shootout? I haven't done one of them yet, but I tell you what, if there's ever going to be a Saturday that's likely to have one, tomorrow 60. is the night. Be a fine way to end the year, wouldn't it, with two nine dart shootouts? Just that. One and that dart at the end just seems a little bit longer, a little bit more focused. So I was happy to have a chat. I think you were going 156. Well, to know the difference of Nick Kenny last night and the Nick Kenny tonight. What a dart that is. 140. And I know that you like your wrestling, Matt, but every leg that Nick Kenny wins right now is pure gold dust. 140. Nick, you're going 16. Yeah, he's going to want to be a sharp shooter here and put this straight in Game the double eight. on the fourth leg. Nick Kenny. Good darts. Everything's going with throw. This is a game that both of them still have potential outcomes. Chris Landman can still win the group. Nick Kenny like needs Chris to win to qualify. Landman already through with Richard Veenstra from this group. 
They're joining Alex Small, who I think 100. has potential to win this week. Leonard Gates also coming through that group with Group C. And then Adam Warner is going to be coming back with his shiny brown shoes. We need to Six. see the cream chinos. What was the nickname? The Dreamy Cream. The Creamy Dream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One hundred. The names we could have had in the final because like the creamy dream, fat beauty, <laughs> <laughs> and commented by Ant and Dick. And that wasn't a typo. One hundred and thirty-five. You think he's got a big chance to you tomorrow? One hundred. Chris Landman. One hundred and thirty-nine. That leaves the finish for Nick. And surprisingly, you don't Nick often see him go down the 19s. I can count that in one hand. And the amount of legs he's played this week. That just slides away from the a good weight balance ratio. Just sl slid into treble five. Because you've gone 142. Whose position would you like to begin here? Oh, Chris's, because you're playing for glory, and if 90. you miss, you're still you through. It's definitely the dream position. Nick Kenny just wants to get this done, wants to get through to Saturday night. Okay, 119. Game shot on the fifth leg. That's, that's, that's another finish. And I think the way he's done that fist pump there, he might even know what the scenario is. Or is he just purely thinking, I'm going to win this so match now? So Nick to throw first. Game on. I don't know if I've got my maths right. You can have a look and hey, double check. But for my maths, that's Nick Kenny through. We've got the minus two. Hey, T3. And if Rob Collins wins for one, he goes minus two. And I guess then we're looking at legs one. Which of my records here is Nick Kenny. 135. I don't think that's going to be, to be something we're looking at here because Nick Kenny is really rattling through. He's certainly got the 100. bit between the teeth. He's approaching the hockey with pace and purpose. Where's the tortoise? Normally in front 95. of you. He's the quickest walker. I'm I was giving you these jokes, you know. <laughs> you set off 30 minutes before me, and I still caught you up the other day getting back to the accommodation. Well, I was on my fourth pasty. I mean, give me, give me a break. Yes, it's advantage Kenny here. 69 left. 135. Like and we can take away our abacus, or can we? 140, Nick, you're going 54. I think you'll see a release here from Nick. It's been a difficult night for him. But Game it's Nick Kenny who the becomes match. the third and final Nick player Kenny. through to a stacked final on Saturday night. I'm absolutely delighted for him, but he's probably learned an awful lot about himself tonight. Big, big win. Nick Kenny. Goes through to the final Saturday, the final game of the night, Richard Veenstra, Rob Collins.
And so Saturday's Super 6 are confirmed. Nick Kenny claiming the final place at finals night with that victory. His first of the evening left himself in a precarious position but got the win against the already qualified Dutchman Chris Landman to book his place in Saturday's action. Four out of four on the doubles, Nick Kenny, who hasn't looked particularly comfortable on the hockey for most of the evening, but did in that match. And it means that, well, we went the scenic route to get there, but it's as you were, the, exactly the outcome that was expected with Vainstrat, Landman and Kenny qualifying from this group. Uh, just the one match left to play. Rob Collins, who has shown some darting dogginess this evening, trying to get through after losing all of his matches last night, won his first two, but defeat to Kai Than Lung uh, in the previous match for him put him in an unassailable position at the foot of the table. He can lift himself off there, but can't now catch Kenny. He takes on the table-topping Richard Vainstra in the last match of this session. Uh, when the pair met yesterday, it was decent checkouts that were the order of the day. Collins claiming the 114 in the opening leg. Went on to lead the match. 3-1, but Richard Vainstra managed to win it on the bullseye for the 127 and game shot. And this is the final game of the evening. Glenn Duran and Matthew Edgar have called them all. Just one more to go, guys, then you can have a lion before rejoining us at finals night tomorrow. And I personally can't wait, Chris. It's going to be a, a brilliant night. Really looking forward to that one. You look at potential dead rubbers. I think the only thing that we can do is Rob Collins can try and get off the bottom of the table, but it's just an opportunity to just show everybody exactly what you're about. Tell us more to Super Series. I want to be back. I wasn't 100% this week. And this is what I can do. I think that's the way I would treat it if I was Rob like Collins. To throw first. If I was Richard Vainstra, he'll be exactly the same as he was on Monday morning at 9.30. I suppose this will be a good chance to move 60. to some of the interaction on Twitter. Nigel Hayden again has been in touch. And he's actually reminded me of a story when we're talking about the food. So I think I was being a bit of a, bit of a brat Go at the time, on, actually. Man. Um me, Nigel Hayden and Kevin Dowling was in Germany. He's not remembered where it was. It was Hildesheim, because we've been there many times since. One so hundred. And we went looking for Chinese food, because I really wanted the Chinese. And this was before the days of like Google Maps and like all the One technology we've now got. So we walked around Hildesheim for about two hours looking for a Chinese before we gave up. And we ended up just going in a McDonald's. Which was near the hotel. When we started going back towards the hotel from the McDonald's, there was a Chinese literally just opposite the hotel. We just walked all the way around these houses and estates and everything. We ended up not going. We went there the day after. Kevin Dowling just goes in and they didn't speak any English. He just goes, I'll have this, this, and this. And he ended up with like this lovely duck meal. And it, it was a great platter. It, it worked out perfectly for him. Yeah, I think all of us Darfers could write a book. I had one very, very similar. We had a, a good night out. Felt like I'd done 10,000 steps. It was one of them nights 60. out. Pub to pub to pub to pub. Jumped in a taxi. Can you take me to this hotel? I got you drove 20 yards and went, that's 280, please. What I didn't realize we walked in 60. one big circle. Robbie Require 120. Did you give him a tip on top of his 280? I think I did a runner. Called the bingo. 44. Richard yeah. Maguire, I actually 87. got a telling off over the bingo, so Chris will be happy, you'll be happy, but Taylor grabbed all to be double 18 for Veenstra. Game show on the first leg. And like I said, he'll Richard treat this Vainstra. match exactly like it was the first game of the week. So I do apologise for fraudulently winning the Motor so Super Series for those bingo. And, uh, but I was given a big telling off by Taylor last night. As he was sweating for the full house, and had his Fifth eyes on the, the gin, eight. the vodka, and the Baileys that I want. And I just felt robbed after just winning the single line and winning a can of Coke. 100. You'll like this story. I've got another one, actually. So I was only about, is any of them funny? Uh, this one has just been called Laurel and Hardy, and I'm trying to work out which one's Hardy. Well, this one's uh, a story where... 
Oh, my One naivety comes into play. So I was about 15 years old and was in Germany. And everywhere I went, we couldn't quite understand the menu. Again, before the days of like Google Translate and things. Fair and I saw the not. Chinese. I says, ah, let's go in the Chinese because I know what that is. Not forgetting that they've actually converted the Chinese into German. Forty one. I just expected to go in there and see like, oh, your sweet and sour chicken, you know, like all the. I bet you're hilarious at a party with these jokes. One hundred. I've just sent me resignation into Mordus after spending a week with you. All right, I think they beat you to it. Forty. Well, we were one hundred and forty-four. But a one four four. Game show finish. The that leg. is Rob dead Collins. rubber. Not on your Nelly. A lovely one four four from the man of steel. Both players showing extreme the professionalism. Richards are through first. Game on. To try and win this final game of the night. One hundred and forty. Just follows what he does best. I don't think he'll want to go into Saturday night with a defeat. But at the same time, he probably just wants to get to bed now, get himself ready. 40. I always found it important, Matt, uh, your preparation for a day of a, of a final, of a, a match player, Grand Slam. I mean, not that you'd know about them sort of competitions, but it was really important for me that I used to like a nice walk, make sure I was hydrated, lots and lots of water. Anything you would plan on a big day of darts? 140. Well, I'm guessing if you're talking about the final of them competitions, you'd have to make sure you've got your ticket with you as well so you can get in to sit and watch them. But, yeah, on, the, on a big day of darts, I just like to do my own thing. And I just, and when I say that, I mean, like, be natural. I never used to, like, over-complicating things. No, you know, I just like four. to do what I'd normally 21. do. You're over-complicating this answer. It's just a straightforward, did you do anything good? I don't know. 50. I start, you started this conversation with Richard Vinch to the top of the league. You're going to end it when he's a world senior. 120. Top of the league, though, is where he is going to be because that defeat for Chris Landman means Richard, Richard Veenstra, the favourite of the group, has landed. So if you did back Richard Veenstra, go collect. Yes, I had him to win Group A. But I had Nick Kenny 39. to win. Group B. I'll be rocking 107. Even Edgar's top tips didn't. Oof. I mean, that would have been obviously seven for top, but you can see the funny side. 77. Richard, you require 32. It's 32 for Veenstra. Games on the third leg. Richard Veenstra. Yeah, we've, we've spoken an awful lot about Richard, where. It's time for him to take that next step up. I think I've seen enough of him but to see he's still in great first. form. I always fancied him to win a lakeside. I always fancied to win a, a major, but really, he's had a couple of attempts at Q skill. Surprise. 60. He didn't get through. Maybe he just didn't like the circumstances, but I mean, to play all day, every day, he's demonstrated to us, us this week of his talents. 59. He's got big 100 averages in him. It doesn't his, his consistency is okay. It's Sorry, his consistency is good. There should be big, bigger things in the future for Richard. But maybe the 20 grand here could be a catalyst for the future. 59. Well, we know what the future is tomorrow. We've got our six players, we've got our lineup. How do you dissect that? And can you maybe eliminate people from that six to narrow it down from six or are you still it's anyone from the six that's a great question actually Matt. I, I honestly i can't take anyone whether you dissect one analyze research i think we'd still have the six players there it's whoever's on the night and uh yeah it's pick, pick one from six if I, if I was looking at someone, Alex Small, but, you know, to win a champion of champions, that means on the day you can do 59. something extremely special. Richard Beans or Chris Lamb, and they've demonstrated to me this week that they've got the game. They haven't faltered. There's no issue of uh, any, you know, being such a long week and 98. fatigue kicking in. I think if I was pushed, I think if I was pushed, I would go with Leonard Gates. Would his setup and 56. finishing? His finishing's great. 
Well, we would have set the flag. Games on the fourth thing. flag. Two two. Rob Collins. Rob Collins on double eighteen there. So if I was push push pushed, Leonard Gates. But no, if you ask me the question in the morning, I think that is Richard, Richard to throw first. On the afternoon, I'll say Nick Kenny. So by that, and I agree, this is six Nine, players that you can take six. a pick from. With that in mind, we should have a lot of opinions tomorrow. So we hope to see lots of interaction on Twitter with you guys tomorrow. Because you should be having a different view on who you think is going to be going through. Or even better, if you do not want to sit what? discussing this one on Twitter with us, why don't you come down? If you're still here... Right now, watching this Rob Collins Richard Beanstra game, you are a super series super fan. Get yourself Fee, down here for the six. last opportunity of 2022. Come down. Me and Glenn Durant will be on commentary. We'll be out there saying hello. You'll probably get a chance to meet the players that are playing on the night, and you'll certainly be treated to a very competitive night. Get yourself over to dartshop.tv. Let's pack it out. Let's get our Christmas jumpers on. If you haven't got a Christmas jumper, 44. go get a bit of tinsel off the tree. Five. Wrap it around you and come down. And let's light it up. Let's make it colourful out there tomorrow. And let's end 2022 45. with a packed house. Dartshop.tv. If you missed that, go there now. Book your tickets. 40. Come on down. Richard, you require 40. Join us in Portsmouth. Richard Beanstra will be there. I'm hoping this dart is there in the double ten. 30. Yeah, I think we got some of the same people coming in on a Saturday night, which is 60. Obviously, appreciable looking for new people. Game show the six players there. Richard Veinstra. 3 2 Veinstra. Yep, Darkshot.tv, guys. Last See, chance of the first. year to come to this great venue. See some darts. Should be a very, very good night. A very good way 100. to end the year. The Beanster will be hoping to end hey, his G3. group. Success in this one. One leg away from a very good week. Play 15 games in Group A. 45. Eight games in Group B. So he's played 23 matches already this week. 139. He's not going to be complaining if he has to play a lot more. Guaranteed two more when the mini groups start tomorrow night. 100. This has been a. Solid game from both, both averaging around the 86. Decent standard. 60. One hundred. Won't be a game that goes all the way. Rob Collins yet to miss a dart at a double in this one. That includes that one four four finish. 97, Robbie Rick 156. And the other 156, it's the same combination, it's two treble 20s. 81, the last start. Richard, you're 122. I don't think there's pressure on here, but I think it's definitely a pride situation. Bullseye. 77, Robbie Rick 75. For a level game. Game show on the sick fair. Three darts Rob Collins. at the double. Three darts hit. We go to a last leg shootout. Seventh and final leg is Richard to throw first. And you can Game just on. see Rob Collins is thinking, where was you yesterday? When he was missing the doubles 100. and giving out the opportunities. That's put him in the situation he's in now. It's not today's play that has put him in the situation he is in. He's had... A couple of good wins today. He opened with a victory over Chris Landman, 4-2. Beat Nick Kenny, 4-1. And it was Nick Kenny who qualified. We had a 100. bit of interaction on Twitter. People thinking Rob Collins might be the man to come and take over Nick Kenny. 
I was agreeing. If there was someone that was going to do it, it looked like it was going to be Rob Collins. Who's finding that treble 19, that switch shot, absolutely beautifully. 134, 134. 4, 5. Certainly not too little. This is quality dark. But it is certainly too late. So timing is everything in the game. Doesn't time this attack to the best, but that's an attack. The treble 20 that moves the 180 column up to three. Two in the favour of Richard Veenstra, one for Rob Collins. And out of 43. nowhere, Richard Glinder and alluded to earlier on, Richard Veenstra, you think you've got him beat. 36, Robbie back, but The opportunity tennis continues. Forty-two. Robbie for the match. Forty. Thirty. Robbie required fifty-two. He hasn't missed a dart at a double yet. Game show. He misses one, but he does not miss Rob two. Collins. Two points for Rob Collins, but it's not going to affect his position. He has played very well tonight. He's won three out of his four games, six points, but the damage really was done yesterday. And we say goodbye to Rob Collins despite the win and despite the 87 average. We now move our attention to tomorrow night where the guys will be joined by this group's winners, Richard Veenstra, Nick Kenny and Chris Landman. They'll be joining Alex Small, Leonard Gates and Adam Warner. They certainly will. Thanks, Matt. Uh, yeah, Glenn, uh, look, at the start of the night, we stood here, we said, is it a foregone conclusion? We went the long way around to get there, but it turned out it was. How do, how do you do this punditry? How do you get, you know, <laughs> just, I would never have guessed that in a million years, but it was exciting. It went right down to the penultimate game and uh, thoroughly enjoyed the night. Yeah, let's have a look at the league table in the end. Rob Collins tonight winning three out of four matches there. It only got him off off to uh, into fourth place, off bottom spot. Uh, Nick Kenny, for a long, long time this night, was looking over his shoulder, but finally put it together when it mattered. It wasn't necessarily the dart, it was just his demeanour. I don't know if he had a couple of issues with the hockey or the stage. He was looking around, and he just lost that focus, which I believe is one of his key strengths. Um, yeah, he, he probably have a good think about him. He needs to come out fighting for tomorrow. It's a big night for him tomorrow. But just quickly, the Dutch duo of Veenstra and Landman, the top two, they finished second and third in Group A. They've been consistent all week, haven't they? Thoroughly enjoyed watching them. And when they play each other as well, it's a thing of beauty. You can watch them for a long time. Great pace. And, you know, like it's, it's probably a, a minute a, a leg. And it's, uh, you know, they've enjoyed each other's company as well. And I'm glad to see them both in the final. So the six players for finals night are now confirmed. And these are the groups that they will be split into. So Adam Warner, who won Group A and has had a couple of days off earlier this week, is going to be in Group 1 with Leonard Gates and Chris Landman. Alex Small, who we saw this afternoon winning Group C, will be in with Richard Vainstra and Nick Kenny. Now, looking at that, Glenn, it's a, it's a different format, of course. Those who watch regularly <coughs> will know that. Everybody plays each other once. The top two go through to the semis. Who are we looking at losing in the group stages? Based on what you've just said, should we uh, do a South Park and kill Kenny? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, but if you're going to put me on the spot, I guess that's why I'm here. Um, I'll, I'll say Adam Warner and Alex Small don't get through the group. Alex Small versus Nick Kenny would be interesting because they know each other very, very well. And um, that's a tough question. But uh, yeah, that, I'll go with Adam and Alec. Interesting. Yeah, I just I, I kind of agree with what you said before about Nick Kenny that he hasn't looked comfortable particularly tonight on the stage for whatever reason and if that spills over if something's in yeah. his head then it, it could be trouble for him couldn't it but yeah it will be interesting right one last question before you can get off tonight Glenn after a uh, comedy act downstairs with Matthew Edgar who wins it who takes the final place at, I'm, uh, confident with, I'm, with my, I'm not going to change my mind I'm going to go with Leonard Gates I think that's a good call as well so let's see if that is what happens you can join us for the last 
finals night of 2022. I mean, if you want to, you can join us here. Tickets available from dartshop.tv. Otherwise, put your feet up, relax, get the get the darts on the telly, mince pie in hand, and join us at 10 p.m. on Sporty Stuff TV or the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. See you then. <laughs>